All right, guys, so I'm going to wait just a few minutes before um, everyone comes in. So it's going to be a moment, but I'm just going to be starting in about two minutes, and that's okay. Um, I see some some people are still rolling in. We're about 70, 72 people right now. Um, okay, so today's going to be pretty simple. Um, I wanted to do a free training about how to start an, like an SMMA social media marketing agency in the automotive space. Uh, this is what I've been doing for the last 15 years. Um, I've been attacking a few markets, but not more than that currently. Um, it's it's a great business to start. And um, I, I, I just decided to create that, um, that video today or that training to help people that might want to start working with car dealerships, um, work with automotive company, maybe um, whatever is related to car dealerships, whether it's car, car detailing, uh, service, service centers, uh, new car dealerships, pre-owned car dealerships, um, finance uh, centers, you know, those car dealerships that are uh, focused on uh, auto credit versus the car itself. It's a little bit different if you know the industry. Um, but there's all kinds of things being thrown around right now on the internet about why it's cool to work with car dealerships or, or how it's done. Um, I've been doing this since uh, 2013 with car dealerships. I, I, I did it with OEMs and car manufacturers from 2010 to from 2010 to 2013. I'll give you a glimpse a little bit um, in a moment. But right now, um, uh, I want to. I, I just wanted to create a quick. Uh, training guys about how it's like to work with work with car dealerships, the mistakes you could avoid uh, doing so, and maybe uh, if that can help you build a business that you love, providing amazing services to car dealerships because this is an industry that I love. I I, I understand it pretty well. I've been um, in the automotive space all my life. I can't get away with it. Um, I can't get away from it, should I say. And uh, it, it, it's been a lot of fun working with a lot of car dealerships, a lot of car, uh, car dealer groups. I've learned a ton in the process. I've been able to make huge mistakes that I'd like to share with you just to make sure you don't make them as well um, because they kind of suck. And, um, you know, and if I was to start over, what I would do to actually build a business much quicker, knowing what I know now. So this is a little bit of what I'm going to share with you guys today. Uh, hopefully this works for you as well. I see a few people came in. So, hey guys, just um, as you were coming in, please tell me where you're from. Um, like just your name and where you're from. That'd be cool. At least I know I'm, I'm speaking to real people um, because sometimes you guys, I just get your, your email address and I don't have a name. So it's a little bit harder for me to understand who is in the groove, who's interested in all of this. So I see Maria in Madrid, that's cool. John, New York City, what's up, what's up? Uh, Andrew in Toronto, what's up, Andrew? Um, fellow Canadian, that's cool. Sydney, uh, no, uh, Lisa in Sydney. Ahmed in Dubai, that's nice. How, like, how hot is it in Dubai right now? Um, Sophie in Paris, that's cool. You speak French, tu parles français? Yeah, cool. Nice. Hopefully you get a lot of value out of this. I, I'm still waiting and I'm still pondering if I, I'm going to do this one in French, but we'll see. Uh, Rajesh Mumbai. Rajesh, did I butcher this? So hopefully not. Uh, Emily in London. Manuel in Mexico City. Pretty cool. Kenji in Tokyo. Nice. I love Tokyo. I'd love to go to Tokyo some, some, uh, sometime. It looks amazing. Um, who else? Julia, Luis. Isabella and Hassan in um, Riyadh. Riyadh? I'm not even sure what that is. Um, okay, so let's let's just get started right now. Um, and if anybody else joins, we'll be able to uh, welcome them in the in the group as well. I got a maximum of a hundred people right now, so let's get started. Um, you know, uh, so. Yeah, so the trainings, um, th th this free training today is pretty simple. Hopefully, if you've been considering starting an SMMA or, or, or maybe you already have a social media marketing agency and you want to work with one or more car dealerships, I'm going to share a little bit more uh, about what I, I went through over the last decade and a half. Um, if that can help you provide better services, build a better business, 
I'll explain to you why I'm doing this as well, um, because I'm an agency owner as well. Um, there's a reason why I'm creating this today, um, you know, and so let's get to the next um, slide. So today I want to help you or give you the, um, you, you know, the actual like path or blueprint on how to launch and scale your car dealership SMMA to uh, $10,000 in profit in 90 days. If you're at zero, that's going to help you. If you're already uh, in business, that's going to help you as well. Um, it's going to be it's going to be even easier for you. And if you're in another space, maybe and you're pondering going into the automotive space, it should help you a lot because you might just make some connections between what you know right now and um, you know what's possible uh, working with car dealerships. And the, the cool thing about it is that it doesn't take like a thousand clients to make a business in the auto space. Just a few. Um, a few good clients will help you make a profitable and solid business. So what you're going to learn today, um, I want to share three secrets with you. Uh, I, I, I hate the word secrets because I think it's tacky, but at the same time, I feel like it's secrets because people online at least are talking about stuff they don't know crap about. Okay. So I want to share what I've learned uh, with you guys. So how to do outreach and close car dealership clients without making cold calls. Uh, I guess you, like whether it's uh, to get your first clients or uh, get the fifth or the 25th one is going to help you. I'm still using this and I'm way past hundreds of clients. Secret number two, how to run your agency working 24 hours a week or less or go crazy or and scale. It depends on what you really want to do. If you want to do 20, 25, 30 hours a week, that's fine. It's going to work out and I'll, I'll explain you how it works. But at the same time, if you're in the season of going just crazy with building a business, you could do four times that and do 100 week, like 100 hour weeks, um, which I don't um, suggest you do for a long period of time, at least. But it's possible. Uh, it's doable if you don't have any commitments, any family, you know, and you're really, really focused on building that thing. That's that's fine. I'll show you exactly how to do it the smart way, at least. Uh, by optimizing optimizing your sales and processes, and the and the third secrets, uh, um, and the third secret is why you need to get in the car dealership niche now before be, before it explodes, and uh, why um, I want to show you how, like how you'll lose a lot of money if you don't do so. So let's get to the bonuses included with this free training. So bonus one, I want to uh, give you a cold calling cold uh, email scripts you can use to outreach. Uh, to do some outreach and, uh, and close demos, appointments, and clients. Uh, car dealership, SMMA, a starter pack. So there's a few things I, uh, I'm i going to sh share with you guys into like this uh, starter pack so you can, you know, make it easier on the, on the process side uh, for your business as you're scaling as well. I want to save you some time just doing main, like menial tasks, stupid tasks nobody should be doing. Um, but sadly, some people that are still amateurs and it's not negative um, are still making these mistake mistakes. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, and then, okay, I'm on track with that. Facebook and Instagram copy that we're using still as of today in my $250,000 a month agency to deliver consistent results for our clients. So it's basically a template we're following just to make sure we get the maximum out of each ad. And it's makes, it makes a tremendous difference. Sometimes doubles or triples than the amount of um, conversions we get for our clients. So obviously they love us for that. Bonus number four, lesson, uh, lessons learned um, from uh, running a 250 thousand dollars a month agency you know um what to look for what to avoid what to do instead uh, just to make sure you make it work the right right way and you don't go crazy or burn out and then bonus number five how to get one actionable tip per week as you're building your SMA and is actually pretty um pretty easy and some of you guys already know what i'm talking about here but i'm going to share that with you a little bit later so my goal today is to help you get your first car dealership client within the next 30 days. Okay. I want to help you scale in, th in three months, but I'd like you to get your first win within 30 days. So I'm going to show you how I'd be doing this. Um, if you did like, if you already have some clients, um, you know, in your business, that's fine. Um, that will help you get to five, 10, 20, 30. If you want, um, I'm going to show you what to do if you want to build a solid business, a profitable agency, because that's the key. 
It's easy to build an agency. It's hard to build a profitable agency. Okay, keep that in mind. Um, uh, what else? So dealers will not only trust you, but they'll even call you before they make big decisions uh, if you do your things right here. So this is what I'm going to share with you how to do that. Build trust and community in the, the, uh, the dealership ecosystem because it's a really tight knit world. And as soon as you understand this, you will see how important it is to bring value to your clients and um, provide amazing results because the the, the, the business will actually grow by itself because people will be referring you people because there's something called um, performance group or like private groups in the car dealership world. And, um, you know, a lot of car dealerships are subscribed to this model. And they, what they'll do is that three to four times a year, they'll meet um, 40, 50, 60 of them and compare their businesses. And obviously the ones that are outperforming the other ones are drawing more attention. So what happens is that some will talk, some will close, will keep that information closer to the vest, but um, there's clicks in this world, right? Like anywhere else. And you'll see dealership owners, general managers share, um, you know, information and uh, insight with other people. So. If someone comes to your client and says, you know what, you've had a lot of success with this, like who's your provider, who's your agency? And most of the time they'll tell because if they're not in immediate competition with them, uh, it, they're going to be happy to share what works for them because they'll they'll be collecting the, the, the value from their friend or colleague, uh, thanking them and, you know, um, uh, giving them like a great feedback about what they just did. So it's um, it's it, it's a it's a rush on their end and their friend gets a solution, a solution, if you know what I mean. So let's keep going. I didn't mean to, mean to explain that, but it's important. So why am I qualified to help you today? Um, I closed personally more than 300 car dealerships for digital digital marketing um, services since 2013. I personally coach uh, nearly a thousand salespeople in private video calls, uh, events, whatever, right? And um, also pre-recorded sessions in Autobahn Academy, which is a training center for uh, car sales, um, car dealerships. Okay, so whether it's car sales, marketing, F and I, that kind of that kind of thing. I managed over thirty million dollars um, in ad spend since twenty eleven. Uh, I work with brands like General Motors, Volkswagen, Audi, Ford, GM, BMW, Honda, and Toyota, if you know them. Um, and also um, more than, actually, you should update this, uh, more than 150 privately owned dealerships and dealership groups. Uh, and my company, Autobahn Digital uh, Agencies, like the agency side, I generated more than 1.5 million leads so far for our clients uh, and about 130,000 uh, sales for our clients since 2019. And I put 4.7 billion here because it, it like it's a funny uh, it's a funny thing. You will see people online saying I generated over 200 million for my clients. You know, c can you imagine if I was to actually use that and be serious about it? If I like, let's say a lead turns out tur turns out turns out to be, you know, a a car uh, a car sold at thirty eight thousand dollars times ten thousand like ten ten thousand times like. The numbers are astronomical. Okay, I uh, having a hard time saying this, but you know, you know what I mean. I just think it's funny when people plug this because yeah, it's cool, it works. Um, but it's it's not only me. I'm not the sole responsible for this. It needs a team. It needs a process. It needs the cars. It needs everything. Okay, so just I just think it's funny. So this is um. The photo here is not my car. Actually, I had um, Volkswagen Golf R at uh, at that time. Uh, I thought it was a pretty cool picture. I love the GTR, um, you know, and the, um, like I, I put that here because I was being chauffeured that day and uh, I'm going to tell you right now how I did it. So I'm, I basically um, found out that I could bu like buy back my time by hiring a um, private chauffeur because back in the day I used to call, I used to email, I used to show up in dealership, just walk in try to get an intro, right? I would just walk in into a dealership and say, you know what, who's in charge of marketing here? I'd like to meet them. 
I I I take a look. Um, I, uh, I I I I put like a cool and innocent smile on my face, so people would just not see me as a salesperson, but someone who really wanted to make a connection. And this this helped me a ton. So if you have the chance to do that, because it depends on your location and how easy it is, um, it's pretty great. It's super time consuming though, so you can't really walk in in more than eight to ten dealerships per day. But if you plan your things right, it's it's kind of cool. And just to go back to the chauffeur thing, at that point I had like four, five, or six meetings on the road all day. What I did was I would leave my house like 5 a.m., 4 a.m. sometimes, and come back at 7 or 8, and I was exhausted. And by the time I went home, I not answered one email or do like any like office work, if that makes sense. So it sucked. Um, so I ended up hiring like a retired guy who would drive me around and while I was moving between my meetings I would be answering my emails doing my calls doing some cold calls research on if I was to if I was about to drop in you know at a dealership I would try to do some research beforehand and uh, that, that was pretty cool so just keep that in mind you can always at some point um, buy back your time if you think you have more value doing what you could be doing instead of doing some uh, light work or uh, low um, value added tasks. Make sense? Cool. So back when I started my agency, okay, so let's just go, go back. At this point, I was working it into like uh, at a huge agency, okay? It was like 30 millions plus a year, not related to this year. Um, it's it, it was amazing. It was a great company, great products. But at that time, what happened as is um, I got uh, in a position of sales director. So I was moving a lot between provinces. I was in planes. I was away from the family. I just had a kid and um, a few events uh, happened uh, while I was gone and it made me so sad. I just ended up taking the decision to leave that company just to take a break, take a moment with the kid. Um, my spouse as well and try to see what I could do next just to make sure it fits what I really wanted for me for my family just to be flexible to be there when it counts and uh, maybe that's not your 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 uh, your situation today maybe you're 18 or 24 years old and you don't have that issue but still if you have the option to make it happen I just want you to um, build your business as it will happen at some point and you don't want to be stuck in your business I was stuck in my business I was smiling here but I was stuck in a business so if I can share with you anything that would help you avoid that, at least that you have the option. If you want to go crazy, go crazy. But if you want to take a vacation or take time off, you should be able to do so as well. If you want to see friends, family, some people are not around and will not be around forever. So you must be able to spend with them to just be stuck at work. OK, so what happened is. Um, I decided to start my business just a few months, like a month before 2020. And we all know what went down in 2020. 2020. So um, basically, my goal was to launch a, a training facility that was online, right? To help car dealerships know a little bit more about what they're doing in terms of um, digital marketing, bring things in the house, because some, some dealerships want to do everything by themselves. But I wanted to help them know what they're doing, right? And uh, not do social media just for the sake of it, but actually perform on social media. But, um, you know, things happened and, um, you know, I was left with a training facility and uh, training courses and programs just to train no one because no one was in dealerships anymore. And then um, I also had a nationwide, the whole country, 12-month uh, non-compete agreement. So I couldn't even speak to my um, to clients of my old company. And that was important for me because I left in super good terms. <clears throat> super good terms. And I wanted it to stay that way. I didn't want to go and to try to poach clients, try to do like things the dirty way. I was fine with that and I wanted to do something else. So this is what I did. Plus, um, by that time, I had now two young kids, okay, really back to back and one more on the way. So it was pretty stressful to have no solution and three kids, like almost three kids. And, um, you know, so what I want to share with you guys is what came out of that pressure, just to make sure you can build a business as well. So earnings disclaimer, this is important. I'm not here to claim you will be a millionaire tomorrow. 
okay? This is not what I am. This is not what I do. Um, I don't sell fluff. I don't want you to believe um, you. this can be achieved like overnight, okay? I've been doing this for a long time. Um, but at the same time, if I knew way back when I started what I know now, it would take me maybe five to ten times less, um, five to ten less time, you know, to get to the same point or maybe even better because I made so many mistakes, trial and error, that kind of thing. Ended up being fine. Um, just sometimes just better to know the shortcut, if you know what I mean. So this is my earnings disclaimer to you. Um, today's free training is not going to be a million. It's gonna, not going to make you a millionaire tomorrow. Just as soon as we understand each other on, the, on that point, that's fine. If that was your expectation from today, you can leave now. That's fine. Um, there's a lot of YouTube gurus that will tell you you can do that as well. Um, but that's not my case. I live in the real world. Okay. So the elephant in the room, why are you helping other agency owners if you own a, an agency yourself? It's a great question. Uh, I've had it a few times and it's pretty simple. There's more than 100,000 uh, car dealerships um, open on the, on the globe right now, right? That's a lot of people, a lot of car dealerships. It's way too much for one agency to handle, okay? That's not my goal. Um, it's, I, I don't want to like build a global agency because there's uh, challenges in terms of taxes and like business structures, laws, all that kind of thing. It's way too much, okay? It's as simple as this. Um, on my end as well, uh, my business is providing more than social media marketing services. And this is not what I want to do myself or build. Like it's not my main focus. Uh, we do that for clients, um, but it's not the only thing I want to do. Um, and also, as you will be working with with uh, other dealerships, you'll understand there's different kind of dealerships, um, different DNA. Some people have a fit, some others don't. I Some people love me, some people hate me, So and it's fine. And it might be just different for you. Some people just love, like might help you or love you. And some people will never do business with you or the other way around. You should not be doing business with every single dealerships. There are some great people in this industry, but also some people to be um, careful of. OK, um, so that, just keep that in mind. So what's in it for me here? I want to build a community. Uh, over the yes, like the social media marketing agency side of things, but specifically automotive. I'm not a pro in other areas. Uh, we do serve other type of types of clients, but my expertise is relies in the, in the automotive niche. Um, uh, I um, I expect to create some partnership opportunities as well if I can introduce some people that will end up uh, building building a business together. That would be amazing for me. Um, that would be cool. And it's also hiring opportunities because I see people coming through the content. And sometimes, you know, some of the campaign manager we have here actually came down from the content and then we started to chat and then like he made a jump. He said, you know what? I want to work for you. So ended up working out for pretty much everyone. So if that makes sense, um, this is why I'm doing this. So this free training is for you. If you're thinking about starting an SMMA, if you're already running in an SMMA, if you love the auto industry and you love, you love cars, that's that's actually my my case. I went into the auto industry because I love cars. Um, is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. But it, it's given me a different uh, perspective and trust factor as well in the automotive industry. Um, you have dealership experience and looking to start your business. Um, that's cool, too. Some people just uh, figure out, you know what? Uh, I really like uh, working in my dealership, but I'd like to build a business for myself. And that's great. It's, if that's your case, I mean, um, it's uh, it's great to have inside uh, dealership experience before launching because it, it will make it easy for you. So on the, uh, uh, on the other hand, please skip this video if you are not coachable, if you don't act on what you learn, if you're OK with where you are, are right now, because I want to help you get to the next level. But that will require you suffer just a little bit. Um, I'll, I'll try to make it easy. but. It's not nothing is going to be given to you. OK, and just understand this. And if you think this is how business works, you have something to learn. OK, um, easy building a business is not easy, but it's super um, 
uh, it's super fun because you'll be learning, you'll be rewarded in the process, and you'll make some connections you will um, never forget. So also, if you're looking to take advantage of car dealerships, that's not the goal here. I want to help you build a great business here, a solid and an ethical business. Um, uh, if you're looking to screw over people, just please leave now because it's not going to work for you. Uh, you're going to be stuck. You're going to, um, you know, uh, burn your name out in this business super quick if you do that. So if that's your plan, just forget it. And if you're not competitive, you can leave as well because this is a highly competitive industry. It's high reward, high risk. OK, um, so a lot of people understand that car dealerships have a lot of money to spend. So a lot of people will be trying to get their business um, and they'll be competing about, like around you. If you really want a non-competitive um, like industry, you can like be my guest and go somewhere where dealerships or like businesses do fifty thousand dollars a year. Nobody will be bothering these people because they have no money to spend. <laughs> but expect, um, you know, fighting with other people to get one hundred, two hundred k of a digital marketing yearly budget. Uh, it's just natural. If you shouldn't be surprised about that, but I just wanted to let you know. So. Don't make the same mistakes I did. Okay, so um, when trying to build a business with car dealerships, uh, like an agency, you should be proud of your, what you're offering and how you're helping car dealers do better online. Um, you know, uh, don't get scared. Don't uh, try to pro procrastinate. Uh, you know, calling people that kind of thing. Okay. Um, I was uh, here's what I was doing first. Okay, I, I, like I got super scared, like cold calling. If that's your case, I'm gonna help you uh, overcome that in the moment. I asked people to close my deal, so I would bring my boss to close my deals, and of course it would you know, it would be best because I would just bring them out when my like the opportunity was really solid and I knew they had a shot. So I was stuck like trying to close like shitty deals. And then when it was easy, my bus would just come in and just close a deal. And, you know, it would my like towards me. I was I was losing trust in myself and my ability. I, I was not learning to sell. And, you know, it's not a great look uh, on your on your bus. If you're always asking for daddy to close your deals, keep that in mind. But if you're building your own business, maybe you don't have a boss and you don't have a closer on your side. So you'll have to do it on your end as well. Um, uh, at, a, at some point, I was relying on walk-in appointments, close clients. Like I said, it was super effective. But uh, in terms of uh, return on time spent, it's it's um, a little bit tough. In consistent outbound, outbound calls and emails, when I started, I didn't have like a strategy or a checklist or like a plan on what actually I, I should be doing every day. I'll explain a little bit more on what you should be doing as far as today if you want to grow your business and it's less complicated than you think. And, um, you know, at some point things were doing great and I stopped doing outreach and then I fell into like a massive slump, like six months. I didn't sell any anything, no commission. It was hell. OK. So you must be wary of that because let's say today you signed 10 clients. Okay. Amazing. But then do you have time to do outreach or you'll be stuck working on your clients, campaigns, business, finding some help, that kind of thing. So you get to keep that in mind and scale slowly until you have the process and the machine can grow faster. So all these things um, cost me a lot of money and they will cost you a lot of money if you repeat the same mistakes I did. So what I like about my business, um, and it might be different for you, but it's scalable based on effort. OK, so I can also provide amazing results to my clients. That's pretty cool when people actually love you um, and say, you know, I, I don't know what we do without you guys. And uh, they're really, really proud and things work. Right. And when you get to that point, guess who's asking to increase the budget? It's not me. I never upsell on budget on my clients. I just let them know, you know, if it works, there's still room to grow and they choose by themselves what kind of budget they want to increase. They'll find their, like somewhere else to pull the money from and they'll, you know, upsell themselves. And it's the easiest sell. And this is why I didn't check this morning, but our average clients is investing seven seventy four hundred um, dollars in social media marketing with us right now. It's pretty cool. 
And I didn't force anyone or put a, like a gun to anyone's head to do that. They all chose to invest more money as they go because it works. And their um, reflex is to say, you know what, if that works, what if I put another thousand in another thousand? And by the end of a 12 month um, uh, relationship, you might have ups, like sold a thousand dollars first and upsell uh, upsold five to six thousand dollars. So this is why it's pretty cool. Uh, I don't need to work 80 hours a week, um, weeks anymore. Um, like I said, if that's your jam, please be my guest, but that's not mine. I want to do something else. Um, I can spend time with the family and travel whatever I want. I've been able to take month long vacations many times a year. Um, it's not given to any, uh, like everyone. And I'm super th thankful and grateful for that. I could not do that when I was, um, when I had a job. Um, it's, it's just not, not possible. But now that I've built a business that lets me do that and I did, I, I, I did it by design. It's not an accident, right? It took me some time, find processes, systems to make it work, but it works. So this is what, you know, I want to share with you a little bit today. And now I got money to invest and buy cool stuff if I want. Plus having a business, depending on what, which country you're in, um, you can pretty much expand, uh, expense a lot of things and write off a lot of things. So. I'm not an accountant, uh, disclaimer, but always check with your accountant what's possible and what's not. But you might be surprised if um, on, on actually what you could deduct from your taxes, depending on your um, business structure and country. Uh, again, check with professionals, uh, depending on where you are in this on this planet. I'm not aware of all laws and uh, I trust my advisors and um, accountants to do the right thing on my end as well. Cool. So secret number one, I want to share with you guys today, how to do outreach and close car dealerships clients without making cold calls. Okay. Because if you're like me, you just hate cold calling. Um, it sucks. It's stressful. Um, you know, I, I'll give you, um, if you haven't, um, caught up on it already, English is not my first language. So doing cold calling in a different language is a little bit more diff difficult as well. Um, you know, it's, it's a little bit slower in my head. So it's, uh, I, I found a way to make it work, even though I didn't want a cold call. So I'll show you what, um, how it works. Um, because when I started, uh, I just, I just remember it was, it was draining. I was just exhausted by noon doing cold calls. I couldn't build a, um, a pipeline, uh, you know, um, I, I think the, the first three months I didn't, I didn't close one deal. Okay. So sales didn't pick up. I got, I had no deals in the pipeline. Um, commission, commission was at zero. So that sucked. And, um, maybe I just went really close from being kicked, like kicked out of the team. I don't know, but when it's your business, it's a little bit different because I had a, a, like a flat, um, like a base salary at the time. But when you have a business, you don't have one, right? So you have to make it work, right? So here's um, what I used to do. And here's what most agency owners and sales team do till to this day. Okay. So they call without a script. They don't introduce themselves um, and the service you provide in a clear and easy to understand way. Because keep in mind, you might be, you might like understand what you're doing, but the, the, the guy or the girl you're getting at the other end of the phone might not. And they might be um, doing something else at the moment. And like their, their mind is not with you. So you have to be super clear about what you're doing. So calling without knowing who's the decision maker. So th this is a major issue. I'll, sh I'll share with you a little bit later how to actually make it work. Show us, uh, showing a stressed out um, tone of voice. So if you're if you're desperate or stressed out, it's going to show. So you're going to lack. Um, you're not going to build confidence on that uh, on that end. Imagine if someone was to call you and they're, they're just squirming at the other end and they're, just, they're scared to talk to you. It's not a good look. And um, you know, calling, trying to book a uh, to book a meeting right away. This is super aggressive. Some people, are, like I've seen people, just try to see, hey, we do this. Would you be up for a meeting uh, tomorrow? So, they, like you, you've not exposed that you know the business. You didn't expose, um, like, what, what's the really the problem of that of that business? They don't have trust in what you have to offer, 
And keep in mind, these people are super busy. And so they're, they're just not waiting for people to call them and book a time, like some random time slots in their, uh, their agenda. They were booked out for weeks. Okay. So if it, if you really ha want to have like a meeting with a car dealership owner, this is maker, you really have to be solid in your approach and, uh, targeted in like on how, or like the subjects you want to speak, um, with them about. Okay. So, um, failure to identify and handle objections. So people will throw objections uh, back at you. So I don't have time right now. I'm not interested. You should know what to answer. No follow up strategy, because most likely if you speak to someone or a key decision maker, you must have a follow up strategy. If you just like your plan is just to call back or touch base or check up <clears throat> or check up on them in a few days or a few weeks, it's not going to work out. You're just going to block your na name and phone number. So <laughs> just don't do that because you're, you're burning yourself, you're burning your name and, um, it's not going to work out. Sorry. Um, and give up on cold calling or, uh, on their business. Okay. So like cold calling is hard. Okay. You will get uh, like 99 no's out of hundred calls. Okay. If you don't know what you're doing, there's better ways, but you all get, you will always get some no's. Okay. Keep that in mind. One, and two, it's super exhausting. So I'd like to show you how to, you know, make it work. So you keep your energy, uh, things work for you as well. Um, you know, if, if that's okay for you. So, all right. So I'm just going to take a break now. Um, is everyone with me up to this point guys in the chat? That makes sense so far. <coughs> yeah. Cool. Amazing. So, like any questions I'm going to answer at the end, um, for those on the live call, for those who are watching the recording, I'll try to find a way to group out the questions and, um, put them at the end of the video somehow. Okay. But that makes sense. If that's you, I want to show you something else, but before, um, let's keep in mind, like SMMA, it's basically a cringe name. I, I hate the term. Okay. It sucks. Social media marketing agency. I, I, just, I just don't like the term. It's a B2B um, marketing agency, right? That happens to work with social media, but there's more than social media and you're not limited to social media marketing as well. My company is not really an SMMA because we're doing a bunch of other things, right? Service, we do BBDC, training, advertising, not only social media, but also on Google, that kind of thing. So it's not, I don't know. It's, it's really B2B sales. Um, but here's the thing that happens when, um, you're poor at B2B sales. Okay. You won't see your business grow. So if you're not growing, you're dying in this business. The, um, the economy, the bit like the, um, the industry is growing at a, like a five, 10, 15% pace year over year. And if you're doing zero, you're pretty much dying. Your, your, your business is dying. Okay. So, uh, I've learned over time that also, if you have no pipeline, you're dead too. So I always wanted to have 10 to 15 car dealerships in my pipeline that were interested in what we had to offer, where we had pitched our services or demo. Um, and we were in talks or at the proposal stage. Okay. So really you want to have a ton of people in like in the pipeline, because people will, will drop off. They'll push back. They'll, uh, postpone what they, they want to do. Something else would happen now, uh, you know, but if, you, if you're, if you're counting on one, two or three clients to save your business, forget it. I can tell you right away. It's not going to happen because you lose two, then you're dead. And then you might fall into a slump. You might have a hard time rec like recouping from that because, um, you know, it'll steal this energy from you. So if you can, if you can keep deals in your pipelines and keep them as that, um, they don't, they don't, they're not stuck in the pipeline that that's amazing as well. Um, decreased revenue, of course, that's, that's a given loss of market share because some, like, like I said earlier, there's a lot of competition in this industry. And if you're not like growing or advancing, you'll be eaten by your competitors because other people are calling your clients and other people are ca calling your prospects as well. So always keep that in mind. 
just don't go crazy stressing out but also keep that in, in the back of your head just to make sure you keep going every day um, you know uh, if you're not executing on uh, proper b2b sales outreach you'll be missing opportunities of course um, also uh, uh, decrease uh, customer lifetime value if you know what it is uh, it's basically the value of um, the dollar val value of your client over time. So what I like about this, uh, the like the agency model with car, car dealerships is that your clients will be advertising every single month. Um, and if you can provide results for them, they'll be sticking with you. So if they give you a thousand dollars in profit per month and they stay for three years, that's thirty six thousand dollars in profit for your agency. And this is what's cool and this is why it's so um, it, it just works even if it's hard to reach out to those car dealerships to those clients because once you have a few clients rolling in it kind of makes sense it works in your business you'll be recouping recouping in the investment maybe in tools ads if you're doing them yeah it's not even like um, mandatory as well and you know, it's it's going to help you recoup that investment in time and money. OK, because the customer lifetime value is big in the automotive automotive industry and it's scalable as well. Um, also, I see some uh, uh, agencies with unreliable sales forecasting. So if you're not if you got no one in the pipeline and no one in the system in, the, in your CRM, it's really, really hard to see where you're going to be in six months from now and 12 months from now. I really suggest you operate like a um, big business, even if you're on your own right now or if you're a small team, because if you operate as like a big business with forecasts and say nothing complicated, but just know I want to hit 50K next year, year over year. At least you'll know what steps you have to do. You can reverse engineer what you have to do today to make it work in 12 months from now. Because if you panic one month before the target date, it's not going to work out. OK, it takes time in this in this industry. The sales cycles could take from anywhere from two to six months. Don't be discouraged if they're not signing up, signing up right away. They might be in contracts with other people and they might be happy with other providers. And sometimes just keep like keeping pushing on them. We'll have them make a move at some point. OK, so keep that in mind. OK, so here's what to do. Um, basically, this is what more than 10 years of B2B sales told me, taught me at least. Um, one, if you're reaching out to someone, you must believe in what you have to offer. If you don't, it's going to be really hard to trust you. Would you buy from someone who is not in control or has no like shaky trust about what they're selling you? Right. No, it's it's just how it goes. You do uh, you must do research first as well. Websites, social media, kind of have a feel of what the company is doing right now. Watch the whole because if you attack just in, and assuming a bunch of things, you might just be in the wrong most of the time. And now uh, I'll show you exactly how to do a little bit of outreach and smart uh, research before calling um, car dealerships. Just make sure you can build trust, have the right like the person, make it efficient and increase your uh, demo appointments and closing ratios. OK, um, ask questions to many people, multiple people. This is what most people are not doing is, is a total mistake when you're calling a company. Most will like any training you'll see or content you'll see or advice you'll see online. And I think it's funny. Uh, they'll have you call the top guy first, <clears throat> like the president, the whole thing, the busiest guy. And at that point, you know nothing about the business. What I like to do instead is call middle management. OK, so I'll just try to hit one or two sales directors, maybe like someone in the operation that ask, just ask questions and try to get a feel of what's really going on and where is it burning? Because one, these people will be more available two, more inclined to share information with you and three, share um, you know, maybe secret information the the owner or the general manager wouldn't share with you because they don't know they shouldn't share that. Right. And there's sometimes they're just like they're employees and they're frustrated about something. So maybe you call the sales director and say, you know what, how's your like leads from Facebook right now? Oh, we're we're not doing Facebook right now. Or maybe uh, they'll tell you, well, we get them, but they're shit, right? They're bad leads. OK, so OK, so you, this is what you're doing right now. You can go back to that. Um, Facebook page and try to understand what they're doing, how you would do it yourself. 
you know, to make it better. And then you can approach a decision maker and say, you know what, I saw you were doing this. You must be uh, getting some bad leads. Here's what we're doing for our clients that makes it more efficient and ensures get high quality leads. Then your people are not losing time on social media uh, leads and they don't hate it. You're not burning your staff. You're not burning your, um, uh, your, your marketing budget, that kind of thing. So this way you, you seem like you know what you're doing and you build a lot of trust super quick versus the other agency guy that might just be full of crap. Okay. So, so um, is that, um, is that clear so far? How do you feel about this guys? Make sense? Oh yeah. There's someone in the, in the hallway. Okay, cool. Is that some, um, Hey, thanks, Tina. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, yeah, speak to non-management people or middle managers, um, identify weaknesses and provide solutions, identify the key DM key decision maker. So these guys, when you speak to one, two, three people, just ask like, how does Bob feel about this? Right? Because he's in charge of marketing, right? And then you can see what's really going on because these guys have a dynamic in the in the company and you should understand this before you get to call them um email phone walk-in that's a that's if possible what i what i like to do is you know um i would call to anyone who would be close for me okay it's not always possible because sometimes you know i'll just hit like a, a dealership that's three thousand months for me but a one, two, three punch that works is that you call first and then you get our information. Uh, you leave a voicemail to the decision maker. You send them an email as well. And then you say, just, I just wanted to uh, warn you. I'm going to be passing by tomorrow right next door. I'll be introducing myself for five minutes. Just wanted to say, hi, I don't want to sell you anything. Um, just wanted to put a face on your name. That's it. Okay. And then you walk in, they expect you and at, like many times over, I was, I was expected and they actually made some time for me. Like I was, it was not what I was expecting or shooting for, but I remember very vividly a Volkswagen dealership. I, I get there and they're like, yeah, yeah, we were expecting you. Like I was like, like I said in the appointment. So always make sure to show up. If you say you're, you're going to show up because I could burn you double edged short here. But I said, yeah, sure. And they said, yeah, come in. Uh, do you want a coffee or something? I'm like, yeah, sure. Then I walk in and the two other managers were there. So the three guys, I was not expecting that, but it's, it's funny how like sometimes just reaching out and say, you know what, I'm just going to be next door. You know, I, I just have time to kill be between, between two appointments. Just wanted to like introduce myself, not here to pitch you on any, anything, uh, give you my info. That's it. Okay. Just go in super easy, super like smiley face, that kind of thing. I, I, I'm not sure how to call it in English, but I got this, um, let's call it that the stupid smiley face. So you just come in the dealership and you're like, like this looking like, um, <laughs> thanks guys. You know, a little bit stupid, right? just approachable, like not in like a hunting mood because you'll see some people like knocking these doors and they're like, yeah, yeah, you know what? Uh, and they seem desperate. They seem like attack mode and they're like that kind of thing. I just think it's easier. It's going to be easier to, to get some FaceTime if you are bringing down the barriers a little bit since they're, they're being like targeted a lot. So try this, let me know, but it works a lot for me. Okay. Um, what else? Sounds good so far. Should I keep going or do you guys have enough? It's been a moment already. Let's keep going. Okay. So I'm going to show you, um, I just wanted to make sure you understand B2B sales is a number game, like any kind of sales really, but you know, we're in B2B sales right now. So if you want to make a hundred calls, like let's say you connect with a hundred people. So it might just take more than hundred calls to connect with like, hundred people, right? Because they'll be busy in meetings, call you back, voicemail, all that kind of thing. Then the average salespeople will book you about 10 meetings. Okay. So they do the things right. They introduce them, uh, their, the business, um, in the right way. They'll book about 10 meetings about their, um, their services. And if you do an okay job, it's uh, again, not stellar, but not 
zero as well, you should get one time. Okay. So if you want to scale that, you can do more calls. Um, but I wanted to find a way to improve my efficiency on all fronts, right? So over time, I perfected a little bit of a, what I'd call the flywheel. Okay. So it's a B2B sales flywheel. We can call it whatever we want. It's just a system that I know that if I do these kind of events in the right order, I'll increase my chance by three to five times to close a client with the same amount of calls, same amount of time and same amount of energy. Okay. That sounds good for you. Um, I want to show you. So does that make sense for you guys? Does, um, you know, we understand that we have to make more calls if you want to get more meetings and more meetings to get more clients. So you can always reverse engineer. So if like I've been doing that for a long time and now I know that my closing ratio here is about 25%. So 10 meetings would should get me two to three clients. Okay. But I got experience. I read books on sales. I got case studies, you know, I, and I, some people might just be better than me as well, but that's what I'm getting. Right. And there's many things I'm doing to make it happen. Um, just want to make sure I can share that with you if that can help as well. Okay. So I decided to uh, create a system because at that point, um, when I started, um, at the first agency, I had no experience in sales. Okay. I never sold anything to anyone. Um, so it was tough. But then I saw other people with larger billing than me. And I said, you know what, how can I make it? So I catch up with them. So as the company grew by two to 300%, I was growing, <clears throat> sorry, I was growing a thousand percent per year. So how I did it is pretty simple. And I can't even believe like the other guys in the company didn't do the same thing because I uh, was not even like, I was not even hiding it. So I built myself a mini B2B sales flywheel. Okay. So what it is basically is a set of events. I can know if I do that, I'll see my sales increase. Um, it's a little, just a little bit of a system I perfected over the last 10 years. Um, it's not complicated. It's not like, it's not a magical, whatever, right? It's not crazy. It's like anyone can do this. Okay. So I was able to increase my revenue, um, tenfold, like just doing so. And I'm far from being the best at cold call. I hate it. I suck. I used to suck at least. Well, I don't know because I don't cold call anymore because of this. And, um, I just hated it. So I just find a way like a lazy way to make it happen. So I don't cold call. I just wanted to warm call and that makes sense. And that's a word. So what I do within the CRM, okay. I'll list the 20 prospects I want to hit on that any given day. Okay. So let's say today I want to, I want to speak to 20, uh, car dealerships. I'll list those car dealerships out in my CRM. I'll build a segment, a list, whatever, right? If, it, if you're using a spreadsheet, that's fine too. And it works. What I'm going to do then is do a five minute spying session, not more than five minutes. I'll actually set up my, um, my, my, my timer here just to make sure, because I've caught myself procrastinating, uh, like spying for like 30 minutes and that kills the whole thing. Okay. Don't do that. What I want to do then is knowing that which website they have, like how many inventory, like what's the inventory roughly, what's the brand, um, What's the main focus? Because if you look at the dealership's website, you'll see what's their focus. Okay. So you'll see if it's finance, if it's used, if it's new, they'll, you'll see on their, on their site because they'll be pushing what they want to sell. Crazy, right? Um, then you want to do your fact finding call. So this is where you call middle management to actually found frustrations and what's real, not really working. And then you do your discovery call with uh, the key decision maker. Okay. So you're not cold calling here. You're doing a discovery call. Okay. You're looking for information. You're not doing, um, you're not trying to book anything at this point. You really want to find out how you can help these people. So by asking great questions, you'll build trust. People will know, you know what you're talking about and you, they'll know you care because if you're only talking about you and your company and how great you are, I can tell you right away, it's not going to work because these guys, they're sales like savages. Okay. General managers and sales managers in dealerships have 10, 15, 20, 30 years experience in sales. You can try to hit up, like hit them up with any like sleazy sales pitch or kind of word track you can but they'll see you coming from a mile away. 
first of all, you'll be the fifth today, okay? You'll be the fifth to call them, which like a shitty tactic. So do it differently, please. And just doing that will help you gain a lot more momentum, trust. And the next time you pick up, because my, today might not be the right time. Today might not be the right timing. But the next time you call, at least they know you're not just a salesperson trying to sell them anything just because you care about your profit and not theirs. You must expose like that you care about their 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 company and ask them questions. That will change your business and how you build your business. Trust me, if you um, take anything out of that training today, it should be this. Okay. So whatever is the outcome here, you'll follow up with an email. Hey, thanks. Didn't want to bother you for, like, uh, for too long. I had other things to do as well. Just make sure you seem busy as well. You don't want to put them on a pedestal and say, you know what? I'm running a sh I, I'm run running my show here, so I wanted to make it quick. And then what I do is that I'll manual send a, like, manually send up a follow-up email and then make sure they're um, inside my email list. So. The email list, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to show you a little bit later. Then I'll update my CRM to make sure I got the right uh, decision maker, name, uh, email, phone, all that kind of thing. I just want to make sure the data is clean. So when I go back, at least I can trust the data that's inside of the CRM. Okay. And then the next day you do the same thing once again and once again and once again. And you'll see, do that for two weeks straight. I can guarantee you, you'll have new demos coming in shortly. Okay. It's not even complicated. I'm not telling you you'll close even if it, like, especially if you're starting out, but you will have opportunities to have a discussion with a car dealership, uh, like a management team. You will see your business advance this way. You might even get like a lucky shot and just close one on, on, on the spot. That happens. It happens. Uh, that happened to me a few times, actually. It's pretty cool, but I don't expect that. Okay. Make sense? Does that um, still align with? Um, yeah. Okay. Is this info new to you guys? Is it like, is it new or have you heard this before? Or is it just completely crazy and you, you, you'd rather just cold call like a madman? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's your call. Like I, I got nothing against cold calling personally. I just, I like to build a machine instead, just different. Okay. So I want to show you what I did and what I'm doing with that list. So my hypothesis was if I get to speak with the right, um, about the right problem to the right person while they know who I am, can I increase my sales? Yes or no? It's an easy, easy yes. Right? So here's what I'm doing with all of this. So once I'm done, I'll actually share weekly updates, um, you know, with that list. So the first week might be 20 prospects, the next week 40 and then 60 and then 80, that kind of thing. Okay. And by the time you reach your third, four, um, like month five, you might be emailing three, four, 500 car dealerships a week. So as you uh, advance, you can send client testimonials, client wins, case studies, frequently asked questions. If you want to do like video, like screen shares, like anything that will help your client <clears throat> trust you, you know, and see, well, this guy really knows what they're talking about. And next time I got a problem, I'll ask them. Okay. This is how I've been able to book appointments straight from my calendar. Um, people have bought like straight up from the website this way. This has made my closing ratio super high versus before because people just know they want to do business with me. They're like, how can you like, or, or they'll just answer with the, you know, like to one of these email and say, Hey, we have a problem about this. What would you do? Or can you show me, can you, can, can, can you present what you would, you would do in, in, in this case and try to see if we, we can work together. So they come to me. I don't sell in these emails. I, I barely do anything to push them for the sale. I just keep on bringing value and I can tell you something. The other guys are not doing it. So this is your opportunity to build trust with your clients. You'll get referrals this way. Even if these guys are not doing business with you, it's crazy. Okay. It's a small world. Just bang on that. And if you're really, really smart about it here, 
at some point you can even hire like a virtual assistant to get more people in the pipeline as well to do some research to do some list building that kind of thing that's you know that's the right way to do it but go go sign your first like two three clients first and then try to optimize this machine here okay um do you feel uh, like this could help you at least gain your first clients if you're just starting out or at least maybe scale your uh, business if um, you're already in business or like this can apply to not dealerships too, right? You know that, okay? Make sense? Cool. Let's keep going. So results. Here's what happened when I started to do that. I was able to double my meetings and then get more clients as a result because I increased my closing ratio as well. So for the same 100 calls, I would get five clients versus one client in the past. So it's a world of a difference when you say when you see the incremental incremental monthly revenue for an agency, like whether you're 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 scaling at you're scaling at one you know, one client per, um, at like one additional client per uh, month versus five at the end of the year, it's just crazy the difference. It, may, it will make a difference between having a sweet, cool agency or a real freaking badass business doing millions every year super quick. Okay, make sense? So let's jump to secret number two. Um, I want to show you, I, I, I took this photo because it made me laugh a little bit because, you know, you see these things online and say, make money while you sleep with uh, chat GPT, whatever, whatever. Right. And it's funny. So I took the guy that's sleeping and making money just just as a meme, um, because like I said earlier, you have a choice here. You can run your agency doing like basically not chilling, but basically doing the work you have to do 25, 30 hours a week, maybe 40 if you want. Have a life, uh, take care of your family, go to the gym, make sure you are not building only one side of your personality or one side of your life and have like a proper balance. Okay. Or you could just go crazy for a moment until you scale. Maybe you set the goal and say, I'm going to work 80 hours a week uh, until I get 10 clients and then I'm going to like um, ease off the gas a little bit. That could be an idea. I have no clue of what's your current situation. Um, where you're from, if you have a, like if you if you have a house, a family, if you're living in your, at your parents, um, you know it, it it's different. Either way, I can show you how to have this choice at least. Okay, so um, what else? Does that sound just okay? So <laughs> okay, all that. No, no. Like yeah, the guy seems to be like sleeping during the day. True. Okay. Good point. But uh, maybe he's sleeping in and it's 10. Um, but if, um, yeah, <laughs> anyway, so okay, like, I just want to make sure you can visualize like having this choice. Um, like if you can see yourself making this choice. So if you want to go crazy or if you want to chill and still have a profitable business and just not putting too much stress on your head, it's uh, that's the choice I want you to have. So most, um, you know, I wanted to share most SMMA owners are guilty of one of these. Okay. So you, you guys are making some mistakes right now. Hopefully not all of them, but if you're making one of these, that's okay. Maybe you don't just don't know you're starting out and need, you, you need some help and that's fine. So not knowing where, where to start. If you have no track records, it's pretty hard to see what's the next step you must take. Imposter syndrome. I've got this in the past. I was, uh, I coached about 40 agency owners so far. And, um, you know, most of them, they're scared because one, they never sold a car. So they feel like it's, it's hard for them to come in into a dealership and say, you know what, here's, I'm going to show you how to sell cars, <laughs> which is kind of true. Uh, no track record case studies. Um, I gotta say it's harder when you don't have anything to show for yourself. Um, I might have an idea for that. Um, you know, you could just do a paid internship, internship or free internship into a dealership. So here's how it works. If really you have no experience in the automotive space and you can afford this, here's what I would do if I was 18 again and trying to build an agency from scratch. Okay. So you just show up to a couple of dealerships in your area and say, you know what? I have a huge interest in digital marketing. I'd like to own my own agency at some point. 
I have a good base of what an, uh, an understanding of what it is to build an agency or at least like digital marketing or social media marketing. I'd like to work for you uh, for free. OK, so I'll sit in your car dealership. You lend me the smallest office you have here and I shadow people and I'll try to understand what kind of issues they got and how we can use social media to um, uh, to solve uh, to solve the, those issues. Uh, I'm going to try to help you. I'm going to uh, I'm going to also help you to save some money on whatever digital marketing uh, that's not working for you right now. And we'll do um, research and development in house to make sure you can make it work for yourself in your specific situation. And I'm not going to leave until I make it happen. And of course, I'm going to have you double verify and check everything I'm doing just to make sure we don't mess up your business. Do we have a deal? OK, so that's what I would do if I was to start today. And you might have a no. But you just keep going until you have a yes, because if you prove yourself professional um, and you really want to learn and you want to help them for free, they might just end up offering you a job as well, which is an upgrade. OK, so maybe you want to have it like a business, but maybe you want to do a job for a moment and you don't know where that could take you as well. If you hit up and you're 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 inside a car dealership group uh, like four or five store, 10 stores, maybe they need some help with this. And uh, maybe you have like a lot of room to grow. And then at some point you can say, you know what? My my goal is still to build my own agency. Can we find a way to make it work like a partnership or um, I'm going to I'm, I'm still going to do the same thing I'm doing for you guys right now. But I'm going to instead of paying me as a salary, you're going to be uh, I'm going to bill you as a client. And then you can find like an arrangement if they want to you to work with some of their competitors. That's fair. You could just have like find a way to negotiate. That's business, right? That's all part of the fun and part of the the opportunity. Sorry, guys. OK. Um, where uh, was I going with that? So, OK, undercharging, overcharging. That's that's a key. I see people overcharging, undercharging. Um, I'm not going to going to go in super like details today because that's a topic of its own. But you know, you have different choices. Some people like to do like retainer and include the the budget inside of that. Um, I'm not quite a fan of this. I'd like to expose. Here's my fee. Here's how we invest in, in Facebook and Instagram, TikTok, whatever. Right. But that's that's, that's just how I do it. Um, some people do it differently. They, they charge like two thousand bucks and then the dealership has no clue. Uh, what's really going on. The issue with that is, let's say you're greedy, um, which uh, you should not be. Uh, let's say you take a thousand dollars and then you invest a thousand dollars in like Facebook. At one point, they're going to ask because some some people like is going to ask them a question and they're going to, you know, it's going to spark the interest. And once they know, <clears throat> they know they'll see you as, as a liar and also um, you might have to, uh, they, they might want to do chargebacks, that kind of thing, retroactive, you mess up the relay in the relationship. It's not, it's not what you want. Okay. So just be upfront, be like, be respectful, ethical, because these guys are not stupid and they, they know how to count money. Okay. And they might not know what they're doing today, but they might learn how to do it in four months from now. So you really want to have a good relationship and trust from your client. Um, if you don't know how to get your first client, the, the flywheel I just showed you might help and what's coming as well. And if you don't know what to speak to, I hope I was able to um, help you with that. So the result, no growth, uh, low non-existent revenue, low scalability. If you don't know what you're doing, it's really hard to scale. It's easy to get four or five clients, but then you must know what to do next. Saying yes to whatever comes their way. OK, so so, so this is important. You should know that if you're starting an agency, you should be you should not say yes to anything to anyone just because you're desperate. I understand sometimes it just might be hard to say no to a client and say, you know what? We don't need your services for this, but could you do this instead? You might be tempted to say yes, even if you can do it right now. But the thing is, over time, if you really want to focus and scale, you must have as little as um, product as possible, at least to start, because the more you add products and different things to do, more custom work, it's going to make your business a lot more complex. 
more SKUs means more uh, complexity and it will hurt your business sooner than you than you think. And what's going to happen is that let's say you say yes to a few clients outside of, of your scope and then you keep growing on, on, on the side slower than you should be because you're stuck here. Then you'll start <clears throat> uh, building resentment about these clients and you'll only want them to leave because they're not what you're really focused on or what you really want to do or maybe you said yes to like a shitty deal and you're not making any money okay so keep that in mind um also uh, this one i felt it in the past as well working like crazy like 60 70 80 hour weeks but still ending up on fridays and saturdays feeling like i didn't move needle or I didn't sell anything or didn't accomplish anything. So if, if that's you, hopefully um, I'm here to help. And it's um, let me know in the comments as well in the, in the chat. And um, if that's that's you, we can we can definitely find a, a solution. Here's the challenge right now under fifty thousand dollars a month in profit. It's a bad spot, honestly, because you can't afford experience help. If you want to if you want to hire help, like let's say you're sitting at only 10 or 20 or 30. Um, you have to do everything by yourself because um, experience, experience help is going to be hard to find. Sure, you can find freelancers, whatever, or but they, they won't be specified in like a specialized, sorry, in the automotive field. So it's, it, it's, uh, it's a weird spot to be in. You're super busy, so you don't have any more time to scale. But at the same time, you need to scale if you want to pay people to free them up. So it's the chicken and egg thing. And it's, it's a tough spot to be in. So like the shorter amount of time you can be stuck in that area although it's super cool to say to anyone you're doing thirty thousand dollars a month um it's a, it's a it's a crappy spot to be in if you stay in the, in that spot so if you're below that as well losing clients will affect your mood affect your business so let's say you got i don't know like five clients and you lose two okay um it's gonna hurt it's gonna hurt like a okay so you must know and you it's important that you know that you must scale to uh, mitigate risk right because if you lose or if two or three clients uh, like uh, reduce their budget maybe it's winter time maybe it's like like slow months you'll get some uh, budgets fluctuations and if it's it's hurting your bottom line so much that you can make your fixed expense it's going to hurt your business by that time, also, you can spend uh, resources on R&D. Uh, so whatever is getting better, um, like gaining better tools, um, low cash flow will also hurt you. So you must also always keep uh, growing your business and getting more, more, more profit in. It seems simple, and like we both agree <laughs> it's simple, but it, like this is why it's important. Um, you'll be stressed as well. And uh, if you're stressed out, it's going to be harder for you to have cool meetings with clients, have better ideas. You must be, um, you know, in a good shape mentally and physically if you want to build a solid business. And uh, also, if <clears throat> you're like kind of stuck uh, under 50K a month, even like a lot more than that, actually, nobody will ever look at your business and be interested to buy it. Um, that agency because at some point you want you might want to do something else you want might want to exit and um, you know roughly agencies are bought roughly from one to three times the um, uh, pro like yearly profit so if you're too small there's no incentive for something someone else to buy you out because they they'll just know they can just kick you out of the market right so keep that in mind as you as you go it might just not be interesting to you right now but if you want to sell in three five seven years from now you can make a huge difference if you're sitting at twenty thousand dollars a month or two hundred thousand dollars a month because at 20k nobody's looking at you and 200k you're starting to have conversations cool okay so speaking of which um guys good so far i see three like it's not bad only three guys left Cool. Hopefully they were the, the ones that were looking to screw car dealers over. Okay, so seven lessons I learned from um, uh, running a $250,000 uh, a month agency. 
Okay, super important. You need to batch activities. If you want to do like two, three cold calls and do CRM work and then just do a demo and then accounting and that kind of thing and just keep going through all that kind of stuff, it's going to be really, really hard to multitask and um, put your mind in a state where you're efficient and optimized uh, for the task at hand. Uh, if you can do like outreach for half a day and then the next, like the, the next half a day, let's say on Monday morning and then you want to do accounting work or um, camping optimization on the, on the afternoon. I found this works super well for me. Some people are still working, like able to juggle between the tasks. It's not my case. I had to find ways. Um, also, create processes for everything. It's, it might just sound stupid, but every single um, invoice that comes into my inbox, because we subscribe to a bunch of s software tools, um, SaaS as we're running the agency and, and the business, uh, everything is just caught up on the, um, I use, we use uh, Google Workspace. Everything is caught up, labeled, every single invoice is pulled out and it's sent into a drive for the right time of the year. So when my accountant um, comes in, they can see every single transaction at the right spot. I don't have it to do anything. It costs me less money, costs me less time as well. I know it's done. It's properly done automatically every day. Um, so just that kind of thing. You should be able to put some systems in place um, as you go. Also, parts of your business you don't like suck ASAP. So um, accounting was one of them um, for me. Although you you can argue with me that's going to be super important. Know your numbers. I agree. But uh, doing like reconciling accounts, that kind of thing, just doing a bunch of like spreadsheet work, like that kind of thing. It's not my jam, right? I like to be out there, put out some content, uh, do things like this with you guys. Um, you know, I this is where my brain fires up and lives, right? And not when I'm doing some accounting and bookkeeping. Although I know 300% it's important. So this is what um, I, out, I outsource first. And then you can find VAs or find like some resources to help you as you grow just to make sure you can keep doing whatever is most valuable, like whatever is activity is more, more valuable for your business. Okay. More time doing MVAs, more, uh, most valuables, activities, whatever. Focus on one or two product at a time, at least, um, maybe one to one product to at least 20, 25 clients. Okay. Just try to keep it as is it might be hard, but you, but, I, 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 it's really important you understand this because it's, it's, it's really harder to uh, run a business that's this wide and this thick, right? Um, I don't know if you saw me here, but anyway, you know what I mean? Um, I'd rather have 25 clients on the same product than um, 25 uh, products for one client. Make sense? Those tools, software to help you scale. Back when I started, like everything I'm using today did not exist. It just didn't exist. Like, mind you, when I started in the auto business, the, the, the iPhone was not it, like was not out. Right. And I'm, I'm starting to have like gray hair in my my beard right now. But w what I mean is that you can do a lot more um, today than we could five or 10 years ago. Same thing for social media. It was a point um, when I started in the business, you can even boost the post. Forget the meta business suit or like the advertising, like advertising um, platform it doesn't, it didn't exist. Okay. So now it's possible. So, and like happily, like Facebook happily made it too complicated for the average dealer. So this is where we come in, but still just keep that in mind and don't be, don't be scared to invest in tools that are maybe 10, 20, $30 a month, dollars a month. If you can save, um, hundreds of like hundreds of dollars because you you're saving some time and as you're as you're scaling you'll see the importance and how much you count to that business because let's be clear if you're not running your business who is right if you're starting out if you have less than 100 clients you cannot really have a general manager or have someone in your place okay so this is important and at some point you'll want to <clears throat> identify what's your uh, buyback rate or your hourly rate. Okay. So let's say you're uh, working, let's say 40 hours a week and you're pulling, I don't know, $10,000 a month. Um, it might end up being like 50 to $60 a, a, an hour. I, I don't know. Um, if you can buy a tool 
that's going to save you five hours at $50 an hour. So it will save you 250 a month. And the tool is $14 or $30. It's really worth it, right? Because you can keep growing and keep scaling your business by that time. Okay. Last but not, not least, sell then deliver. Okay. So this is a little bit more stressful. Not gonna, not, not, not gonna hide that. Um, but I found myself, um, creating content or products I did not sold yet. So I had no idea if anybody wanted these products and I built, I built, I built. What ended up happening is that these hit the graveyard. I didn't have any clients for these products because they didn't need it, right? If I had done the opposite earlier, which I'm doing right now, I sell, then we deliver. But then when we sell, we let, the, let our clients know it's only available in 10 days and 14 days. We'll be ready on that date um, because we know how much time it's going to take. And we always add a buffer just to make sure because there are some things you won't be considering, questions, uh, problems on the client's end, whatever. Give yourself a buffer. And people res will respect that. It's fine. If you deliver too quickly, especially if you charge um, setup fees, they'll, they'll think that they're being ripped off. So just find a sweet middle ground. Uh, in all of this, um, but always sell then deliver on your product and not the opposite because you'll be stuck in a procrastination loop if you do the opposite. And I don't want you for um, don't want you uh, to be stuck in that uh, in that place. It's not cool. Um, okay, so far, do you feel like this information could um, lead to improvements on your end? Yeah, good so far. Makes sense why you should get in the car dealership niche right now. Okay. Because it's ripe to explode. The business has changed. Um, there's a lot of opportunity right now that's not being grasped right now. So here's the current state of what's really going on in, uh, in the auto, uh, in the auto space. And it's pretty much true for any, any market right now. That's pretty cool. So inventory is back. There was a time where car dealerships didn't have any inventory. So advertising was not something they would do because they didn't, they didn't need advertising to sell cars, right? They didn't have them. They have like waiting lists for years. Um, it, at that point, it doesn't make any sense to advertise your models and, um, do some promotions. Okay. So it costs money and you're only enraging or frustrating clients saying, well, it's going to be in 24 months from now. And by on that, by that time you paid those clicks, it doesn't work. Google has gotten super expensive and competitive or over the last decade. It used to be a lot easier, a lot cheaper, but now I, I'm under the impression. I don't know what it is exactly. I can't tell you for sure, but it's a little bit harder than it was before on Google. It could be a mix of things, um, the different attention spent on different kinds of sites different uh, ways to search for, for, for products from different generations. Uh, some will say chat GPT is stealing um, traffic from Google. I'm not sure I agree in this particular case, but I can only tell you it's getting harder to pull some major volume. Um, Facebook and Instagram's organic reach is sitting at an all time low. So it's crazy. If you have 20,000 likes, you might just reach two, three, 400 people if you post. And that sucks. Um, it's not, it's, it's not going to make a huge difference in a business, especially if they have four or 5,000 likes, it's not just not going to work for them. Gen X and Gen Z are shopping on social media, which is not, uh, was not the, the common, uh, practice for, um, maybe boomers or people are a little bit, um, Gen Y, um, you know, searching on Google right now, people are getting their information on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, that kind of thing. Um, so it's, it's a different shift in where car dealerships should, should be allocating their marketing dollars. And they should know that, um, like they used to advertise on TV a lot as well. Nobody watches TV anymore. <laughs> it's, it's getting crazy. People are hot, uh, hooked on YouTube, Netflix, that kind of thing. Um, depending on where you are right, uh, right now in the world, um, radio newspapers, um, once you've tasted uh, digital marketing and attribution. So if you put a dollar in, you get four out as a car dealerships <clears throat> as a car dealership. 
um, they tend to see uh, or to be less inclined to invest in uh, newspaper or radio because you don't know if it works, really. I had a um, client at some point, that thing was crazy. They made a mistake. They advertised a Mercedes Benz C Class at like 25% off. Okay. So when they went to print the ad, they sent the right price in, like the wrong price in, sorry. So it was like the like the new C350 was cheaper than the used ones from like three years ago. It was a major newspaper in a major city. So they were just panicking. They couldn't do anything because when they saw it, it was out. Nobody called. Not a single soul. So all day, like two, three days running, they were scared of shit, right? They thought somebody would claim because by the law, you have to accept, right? You have to say, yeah, this is what's advertised. Um, we have to honor it. Didn't have to. Can you imagine? Like that, I I'll always remember that my um, that that client just said, you know what? This is the day I knew newspapers uh, were dead for car dealers, and it's pretty crazy. So just keep that in mind. Email SMS marketing takes skill to increase ROI and reduce spam on subscribers. It's very like I love email and SMS marketing. Actually, we do it, but you have to be a pro. You have to be an expert because. It's like the average dealership is doing it um, the wrong way. They're too aggressive. They're landing in spam, getting the, their numbers blocked. So it's not a scalable and viable um, uh, way of advertising for car dealerships, uh, let alone uh, just individuals, uh, car salespeople. It's hard. It doesn't work. Um, also, TikTok. I'm a big fan of TikTok. I have a small coaching group on the TikTok, uh, like on the car sales side, and uh, they're making bank. Okay. But the thing is, you actually have to work. You have to create content. You have to be intentional about it. And um, like I find it's maybe 1% of car salespeople are not even 1%, less than 1% are inclined to do it the right way, to put the work in, to know it's going to be an overnight thing. Um, just people expect to be like, well, I did a video on TikTok and it didn't work. I'm like, yeah, sure, you did one. You see these influencers, they were doing one every three hours. Okay. And they were putting the work in. They are um, putting that as their job. They're providing, they're engaging, that kind of thing. If you just took their phone and shouted like a payment at 375 people, of course, it doesn't work. Okay. It doesn't work this way. Um, so you can like, I, I, I've went through this. It's not like a viable or scalable um, market. If you want to do it, there's always advertising on TikTok. But honestly, just secure Facebook first. It's much simpler. You don't need to create like a uh, refresh of videos, that kind of thing. It's it's a no, like it's a whole other beast. If you want to go on TikTok with car dealerships, 100% doable. Not the low hanging fruit for you guys. And um, what I like the, the the best about all of this is that 95%. 95% of car dealerships are not performing on Facebook and Instagram as it is. And then the platform has been around for 15 years. Um, they're still not grasping what's to be done. So this is why you and where you come in, because you can help them optimize this and build a business and steady, steady uh, stream of leads inside their dealership using Facebook and Instagram. And if you do it right, it's going to be a low maintenance for you. High reward for your client. And you know what? I, I, I put this one in because understand one thing. Car dealerships are confused, okay? More than 50% are not advertising on Facebook. Either one, because they never did it, they don't understand it, or they did it in the past and it sucked for them. Doesn't, <clears throat> doesn't mean if you try one kind of soup that you hate that kind of soup, that you will hate all soup you will ever be, like you'll ever be presented. Shaky um, comparison, I know. But at the same time, it's still true, right? There's different recipes. It's like cook, like it's it's like cooking a cake. If you're using the wrong ingredients, it's gonna taste like crap. But if you're using the right ingredients, it's gonna taste really good, and you want you're gonna want some more. So this is what you have to build for your clients. 
for those using Facebook already, most of them are not using them and like using it to its full potential. And I love Facebook for that because it helps you spy on your prospects. You probably know, but I'm going to tell you, you can go onto a car dealership's um, uh, Facebook page. You can go in ad library and try and see exactly what they're running as ads right now. You can see right now if they have only one ad live, they already know they're not maximizing and they're not taking it serious. You also see what kind of, kind of offer they're pushing if you, they're using lead ads, messenger ads, that kind of thing. So at least you'll know. It's better to see to reach out to someone who's already using Facebook, but it's not up some, like um, not taking advantage of the whole thing because they're sold on the importance of the platform, but they're not. Um, you, you already know you'll make a wow effect if you come in and you create like a bunch of 10, 12, 20 amazing um, Facebook ads for them and Instagram ads for them. And, you know, you really turn things up. Um, so this is this is easy. Be wary of those not doing any ads right now because you will have to sell them on why it's important first versus why to switch for you versus what they're doing right now, which is the last one is easier. If you want to convince someone to use Facebook, it's a little bit harder. I'm not saying it's impossible, but if you want to really make it easy on your uh, on your end and be um, make it easier for you to scale, make sure to go and see those who are investing already. Uh, moreover, you could just um, try to see if that specific dealership is also uh, advertising on Google because that, that way, you know, they have they're already spending money online. So they have a budget they could move around um, when it's time, you know, it's a little trick here. Uh, what else? <clears throat> Obviously, they need, they need help with uh, setting campaigns, managing budgets. They need turnkey solutions. So this is key because car dealerships, they want a result. They don't really care how you do it as long as you do it right. They want a result. They want to put the dollar in, put and get X amount of dollars out. Um, they care about the technical side, but just don't go over there and just explain everything you're doing. You're going to like confuse them. They're not in that business. Keep that to yourself. Just say, you know what, we're going to do that because it served this purpose and it's going to help you achieve this. This is how it costs. Be super up, like upfront with that. It's going to help you. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, no, I'm, I'm not going to share that with, with, the, with the other guys at least. See, um, this is why I love this industry because they have tons of money uh, to spend if you can show them um, something works. Okay, they have a lot of money. Most dealerships will allocate whether from a hundred, depending on the markets, right? Might be different. You, this is a good question to ask uh, if you're reaching out to a key decision maker. Actually, this is a smart question. How many uh, dollars per car sold are you allocating to marketing right now? This will give you. A glimpse of their total marketing budget, especially if you're asking them how many cars are you selling uh, yearly or monthly at the moment. So if they're selling 100 cars, and uh, like let's say or a thousand cars every year, and they're putting three hundred dollars per sold cars on marketing, you already know that the total budget is 300k, which is pretty good, right? And it's not crazy either. I used to have a dealership; they were like it was different. It was different. Um, but they were in a market where they had to advertise in Spanish and English pretty much 50 50. OK, so this is crazy. So they basically had like a double budget. They had 700 and something per car, car sold and they sold 1500. So like the like the the budget was just insane. They um, it, it's so sad because it changed ownership and then it was a group and then they started doing everything in house. That was a big loss. But at some point we were billing like $28,000 a month for one car dealership um, in revenue. So that was pretty cool. But, you know, then again, um, it's not the average. It's not like not all dealerships are this way, but it's possible. And just so you understand, like what, what kind of questions to ask, you could see how the business works and it's run is ran. And you could understand what's you know, what's the, the digital marketing or total marketing budget they have on hand. And then you can ask more questions at that point, just doing like a like parenthesis here um, because they might have a website or fixed expense 
uh, they need they need to have for marketing which is not advertising or, or fluctuating so um like they might be putting their crm inside of there and they might be just putting their website um and some other third party marketplace that are too important for them so know that maybe if they have twenty thousand dollars a month in marketing advertising like advertising dollars um only maybe 14 or 15 might be up for grabs make sense let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this um i might just get uh more in depth with that um yeah okay so there's a reason um why like i i really think the, um, the car dealership niche is the best right now because one it's evolving constantly okay there's new stuff coming out every week it's a high pressure uh industry uh the market consumer has shifted as well um pre and post pandemic as well it's been different um people are accepting shopping online now uh it's not 100 percent online the people are not just everyone's not buying online but while a regular showroom might see two, three, four hundred people per month, maximum, right? Including people walking into service base. Um, they might be they might see um, five, 10, 15, 20,000 people coming into the website. So we can all agree the web is their number one showroom right now. And uh, like as soon as you understand this, you see how important it is for car dealerships to invest online. They have more people come in onto their digital showroom than their physical showroom for sure and there's a hundred thousand car dealerships on the planet and more um as of today okay so the opportunity is just crazy if you want to pick a niche uh you want to pick a brand you can do whatever you want if you want to just work with gm dealerships or like audi dealerships you can do that there's thousands of them okay uh, if you want to specialize only with uh, Mercedes-Benz dealerships because you, you, you're you crazy about the brand, you can only serve Mercedes-Benz car dealership. And actually, if you really want to do that, it might just be easier. Because if you specialize with one brand, at least to start, it's going to be easier to get your next, your next, your next client. It's a lot more, it's a lot easier to get your 26th client uh, in a brand when you get 25 versus 0 to 1. Keep that in mind. <clears throat> it's also more scalable for you smarter this way quick tip here um they basically have unlimited money to spend as as long as things work right if they put a dollar in and they get four out they will ask you how many dollars they could put up front until they start losing money basically that's that's the conversation you'll have with them at some point huge upsell uh opportunities as well at um i uh, when when you're ready to scale your products it's easy to help them understand they could add on uh, some so some some new stuff as well let's say <clears throat> in my business i'm a little bit further down the road but let's say we've been generating leads but the thing is they have a hard time um knowing what they should be doing with these leads right so lo and behold we have a virtual bdc system that comes in plugs and play with their dealership and takes the lead and just uh, you know takes lead in and put um you know appointments out so that the, the, they don't see the whole thing they just get the appointments out of the whole thing and it's cheaper for them versus having a team for that in the house they don't have to train them they don't have to really care about what's really happening like the human resources side of things all that kind of thing is taken care of so see it's it's a huge opportunity at some point and what's really cool about it is that they'll actually ask you if you can help them in a way then you can decide if it's time for you to upsell to create a different product and build your business double triple quadruple your business at that point because <clears throat> let's say you have 21 clients and seven of them want a different service which is pretty much the same you can offer them say you know what i, I i'm gonna start that at that date are you in are you out they say yes come in you already know you have a solid business foundation you have contracts all that kind of thing and uh, the risk is behind you. And also, I just want to um, wanted to pull, put put that is this in here. It's, they're super cool clients because usually car dealerships, well, um, they have like an atypical uh, background. Okay, um, they got resources. They're investing in the community. 
Um, if you build a relationship with them, you'll also be able to do some non-work related activities, playing golf, doing to, going to events. One of them, one of my clients, um, lent like two on two of my clients actually lend me their car. One was a Alfa Romeo and the other one was a Porsche. Um, I was able to drive around with their cars for a bit, you know, and I've seen some other guys as well. I never did this, but you could say, you know what, I'm going to work for you, but I want you to put me on payroll or I want to you to lend me a car or that kind of thing, like a demo, like uh, as part or totality of my pay. So then you choose if you want to want a crazy car and just be paid as I would with the crazy car, be my guest. I, I prefer cash because you can use that to build. But if, you, if that's what you want to do, it's fine by me. You decide what you do. And also, my favorite here, why it's nice to work with car dealerships. Whenever you're working in the auto, uh, auto space, uh, the car dealership space, you have some kind of a crystal ball. Okay, let me, let me explain. This industry is moving so slow because it's so big. There's so much money, so many players that um, it's also um, related to people buying a car every two, three, four years. They're not buying cars every two weeks, right? So everything moves super slow, okay? It's called a dealership. I always joked about it. Like, I always joke about it. It's a ship, right? It's a dealership. It's, it's big. And it's slow. It moves slow. It changes direction slowly. But during that time, other industries, e com you know, fashion, all those kind of things are evolving much more rapidly. So you can actually, well, sitting back in the in the auto space, you can actually see what's coming our way in terms of software, trends, you know, whatever's available, um, technology. You can see from one to three years in advance what's really gonna going to hit the automotive sector, which I think is pretty, pretty cool because that that let you prepare in advance be upfront if you want to at some point invest in new tech, uh, grow your product offering. You can see what's coming and what's what's being adopted in other industries. And you'll see pretty much what's going to happen in the auto industry. So I think that's pretty cool. That's my favorite, like the favorite reason right now why I love the, the, the car dealership uh, niche so much. I wanted to take this. This was actually in the newsletter. If you if you're not subscribed, um, you can do so here, Automat Academy um, slash SMMA, but not now. Just wait a little bit until I'm done um, inside that video. Um, but this is the bliss point. This is where I think it's key to work with car dealerships because you might have a um, huge number of potential clients. Let's say usually there's more restaurants and car dealerships, but they like the problem is that they don't have any money uh, to spend on marketing. So a lot of clients, low uh, growth opportunity. On the other hand, you want to go to like some, you might say, like, say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to find the big fish, right? The ones that are spending millions every month. Fine. Car manufacturers are inside there. When I was uh, doing um, advertising for Ford, I manage 4 million every quarter. So 1.5, roughly 1.3 in uh, 1.3 million a month in advertising. But then how many Fords are there? Right. And um, it's super hard to get these company because at this point it's 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 almost a politics game and it's long term agreements and it's a lot of work. OK, so this is why I love car dealerships so much because the bliss, it's the bliss point for me. It's enough clients with enough money. Okay. So, and it's recurring as well. Some people will try to, you know, you can always sell a, a website to a restaurant, but they're not going to buy a new uh, website next week or next month. With our car dealerships, they always need to update <clears throat> their uh, promotions, their ads, all that kind of thing. So you can really build a solid recurring revenue. That's not $50 a month. We're in this business to pull a thousand, 1500, 2000 and more per month in profit per client. Okay. So this is how you do it. This is why the car dealerships, um, ecosystem or client or persona is the best for me. So 
more um, about why it's it like so before I leave you today I want you to make sure like I want to make sure it's really clear for you it's like the dealership niche is the best right now I don't know five years from now that the industry is changing super fast now is the time to get in because with the um, <clears throat> what happened in the last three years the market shifted uh, companies went out of business agencies start uh, like stop serving car dealerships so there's a there's an opportunity here for more people to come in. People are used to be shopping offline before they are shopping like almost 100% online right now. Car dealerships are not still not taking me social media seriously. Um, I think they're they're taking it seriously, but they're not optimized right now. This is where you come in. The marketing spend scattered online offline it used to be like a little bit of web, a little bit of radio, TV, newspaper, all that, all that kind of thing. But now this part is gone. So it's nearly 100% online. It, you don't even have to fight for it anymore. When I started, I had to take like newspapers, like $15,000 a month newspaper budget and bring it online where people were still scared, like back in 2014 to put dollars online because they didn't know what it was. It was crazy. Like, I mean, like saying that to today seems really crazy, but it was the reality. You do not have this issue right now. Right now, every, everyone knows online it's where it's at. And now, um, you know, w what shifted in the last few years too is that custom orders were less than 1% of sales. Now it's up to 15% in some cases, some brands, right? Because people expect now, they like the consumer expects or has now learned that uh, the inventory is not going back to what it was before, like dealerships holding 500 cars on the lot with the interest raking up. You know, uh, people now understand that they can purchase or, um, you know, order their car online, depending on the website, on the dealership website, on the, the OEM's website as well. So this is your opportunity to help the dealership bring more people on their website and order a car at that dealership versus another one and make it easy. Because it used to be a super local game, but now people from may maybe like 50 miles away might still do business with you and order their cards online with your client if you're doing things right and make it simple for them, which was not really the case before. Now this is an opportunity to make it happen because in, like, at the end of the day, like the, the client doesn't really care about the dealership or who they, che they, they, chose, they choose really want to have a, like a tr transparent and easy transaction and quick. Um, so this is your opportunity to rake a little bit larger in terms of, of clients and good news for you. It's more budget if you are able to do so. I like one of the questions I, I got um, the most while doing like SMMA or like agency coaching, if, if I may was how many clients do I do I need to have like a solid business? And it, like, it depends really, but I, I pulled this one out here to compare, okay? So you might start out at 1500 um, uh, total billing. So including ad spend, right? Then pull maybe 300 and 500 <clears throat> net revenue. If you have five clients that 25, up to 25,000, uh, $2,500 per month and yearly revenue here, which is pretty good, right? It's pretty nice if you get started and then you keep scaling because the first five is going to be the like the hardest. Average time spent per client, we tr like we try to spend between one to two, two hours optimizing uh, per client where uh, where possible. Sometimes it's a little bit harder, so you need to put a little more time in. But as you go and you build processes and if you stick to my um, advice with one product for a bit, it's going to help that here instead of spending five, 10 hours per clients per month. This, this is where it's going to kill your business. Um, the average time per week per client, um, for to, to run your, your business might be around two, three, four, five hours at $300 uh, dollars an hour. If I just take this and divide it by the number of hours here, which is pretty decent. I don't know. Would you be okay working at $300 an hour right now? I mean, most people I know that have a job are not making nearly as much as this for a lot more work and a lot, <laughs> a lot more skill as well. Okay, it's stupid. It's, it, it also, it, it, 
it it almost sounds too good to be true but the fact is like i i wouldn't know how to spend more time right now in our clients accounts like i don't know um, you could always like give them products for free but you know i'm not going to do that because it's a business but when you've when you've optimized and you already have like templates and that kind of thing that works and you know you just push publish and then it goes and it works so might be um double that maybe the first few months i don't know depends depends on your skill set let's say you do that you're you're spending twice as much time here you're still in 150 an hour which is does that sounds good yeah 150 i got people in the medical space in my uh that i know and they're not making that kind of money and they're saving lives so <laughs> we're not <laughs> We're not saving lives. So established as MMA. Uh, here I, I draw a numbers from my own agency here um, at year three. So 5,500 um, roughly, a little bit less. It was, it was 54, 73, I, I don't know, something uh, on year three, average per client. Uh, average monthly pro uh, profit um, depended uh, between these active clients. Average monthly profit here, it was fluctuating here. Sometimes I would have a little bit more, a little bit less client. Um, yearly revenue, nearly two, two million a year. Um, I was so pissed. I missed that mark at that point. And, you know, there's worse problem than others. Average time spent per client, two hours here. Only because um, if you have this amount of experience, it would have been five here. But we, uh, we are experienced. We got processes, tools in place. And uh, we're still able to pull uh, 500, uh, um, not thousand, five hundred dollars an hour uh, doing this with that um, uh, running at that kind of volume here. Okay, does that sound good? Yeah, makes sense. It's not crazy, guys. These guys here, they have, let's say, two thousand dollars on Facebook, a thousand on Instagram. They have chatbots. They have like a mini VBDC or like a mini. Um, you know, package that uh, will help them with their promotions. Um, you know, it, you're you're pretty much sitting at a decent profit per store here. That makes sense. And keep in mind, we're doing this here, but these car dealerships are doing more, like are pulling more money than us, right? They're the ones that, that are making like the most money in this deal. That, that's what's crazy. So whenever one um, one car dealership or one manager challenged me on that, I'm like, yeah, you know what? We can switch. If you want to give me all your profit, I'll, I'll give you all mine, but you don't pay anything. And they all say no, and they, they laugh when I tell them how it's really going up. Because if they spend uh, $5,000 with me, <clears throat> they might sell, I don't know, uh, 15, 20, 25 cars, right? They'll do easily twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars in 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 profit. Okay, only by that plus the they win a client, they get service revenue like future service revenue. They unload a car, they stop paying interest on that car. You know, all that kind of thing that adds up, right? So they got the they got the best part of the business here. But you always have to make sure it's a win-win for both of you guys. If they're trying to squeeze you and try to give like make sure you don't make any money, you, you have the right to just leave. Say, you know what? I work respectfully. I I, I work with uh, with dealerships. If we both make money, it has to be a win win, not a win lose situation. And I'm not gonna be on on the losing end, and you're not gonna be on the losing end. I'm not gonna screw you over, but please accept that I must do, I must be making money if I want to be um, putting some effort, time, and invest into my product. Make sense? Is there anyone else excited about this or just me? Right? Cool. Cool hair, right? Anyway, um, what's next? So um, if you if you get this, you see that uh, car dealerships have unlimited uh, potential for you guys. OK, that model works for me. It worked for me. It still works for me. It still works for my business. It worked for. Uh, 34 out of 37 SMMA owners that decided to apply what they learn hiring me as a coach. Because what I used to do is that you could book my agenda. I would charge 250 an hour to basically take 
um, take you up wherever you are in your business, in your social media marketing agency, uh, and help you get to the next step, next level. So I did that for a bit, last two years. I actually started weird because um, through Autobahn Academy, okay, that you see here, <clears throat> it's basically a platform to um, that has courses for car dealerships around social media, Facebook. There's a course about Facebook, about TikTok. There was a car sales boot camp, uh, email marketing, SMS, whatever, right? And I ended up understanding that nearly 12, 15%, maybe 15% of people who are buying these things were actually agency owners. Okay, asking questions, just reaching out after the fact and saying, you know what, 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 are, what are you doing? What are you expecting to do? Are you selling cars or are you a general manager or are you a marketing manager? I say, no, I am a, an agency owner. I own an agency or I want to start an agency. I want to understand how to make it work for my clients. I say, okay, so is there anything I can help you with? Right. I started just asking questions and over time I built whatever, um, you know, like some kind of a, uh, program or curriculum for to go through and I was able to coach I, I hate the word coach but it is what it is uh, 37 um, uh, agency owners over the last two years and um, around specific topics and I understood at some point I like every single topic was coming back the same questions again um, you know all that kind of thing so um, and at this point I'm happy to say that nearly all of them made a business and built and grew their business. Only three of them actually ditched the program and say, you know what? This is not for me. Just fine. No hard feelings. I, I just, I just hope that like these, these three guys, uh, really found a way to build a business that suits their interests as well. Um, I, I wish them the best, but the other 34, <clears throat> I'm still in contact with more than half of them actually. And we, we speak one once in a while. And I see where they are right now. We got, um, I got people in Asia, Europe, mostly America, South America as well. And basically what I did is, um, I, I decided to do something else with that because I know, and I understand how the car dealer niche is competitive. Um, so if you're still here, I'd like to show you something. Okay. You guys want me to show you what I'm working on right now? If you're seeing this, it's not, it's not going to be available to anyone. Okay. If you're seeing this is the first time me showing that to anyone else. No, it's actually the second one because the other day I held a, another call with a smaller group. Yeah. Like great question. So what I decided to do here is that I packaged everything. I went through, uh, coaching 37 owners, uh, through. 110 ish, uh, coaching sessions. Okay. Private sessions, all that were paid for 200, uh, 250 bucks an hour us dollars. And what I did is that I, my hypothesis here is that what if I packaged everything, every discussion or every question and every answer, um, I got through these calls. Uh, inside like a pre-packaged course slash tool slash checklist slash bonuses kind of thing. And um, would that be of some interest um, for people that want to build a social media marketing agency working with auto dealers? So would you guys like to see what's inside that kind of thing? I can stop right now. If, if nobody wants it, all good. No arms done. I'll, I'll stop. Yeah. Hey, Josh, calm, calm down. Okay. Calm down. That's fine. Okay. So I got, I got 14 yeses, 15 yeses. Okay. So I'm going to show you something. Okay. So if you're watching that on YouTube as well, um, because it, this, this thing, I'm going to record it. I might, uh, might publish it a little bit later, but I want to show you something. Okay. So. What I did is I created a six part, um, training or course with different module inside. Okay. So module one is about creating the foundation of your, uh, your agencies. Um, what I learned working with 500 car dealerships 
um, how to choose your model as well. What kind of model do you want to choose? There's three models you could choose for your agency. I want to help you choose the right one. Uh, why choose the dealership niche? I, I, I go a little bit more in detail than what we just did. Should you do it, sign a hustle or go full time? When to leave your job? Um, how to define your core product and core offer first so you can so you can start right away. Um, how to prep for your agency's exit if you want to sell at some point, if you want to maximize revenue or um, uh, maximize the, the sale price at that point. Should you go with local or international client, depending on where you are right now in the world, you, you might have seen the numbers I just presented to you and you're like, you know what? There's no way dealers are in, like investing that kind of money here. Uh, what you should do then if you really want to attack that niche, uh, that's going to be inside of there. Um, and what to do if you have zero experience in an agency, okay? Because like I said, I was part of two 30 million plus agencies. It was not me that launched the thing. There was a structure. I watched the people uh, build the thing, uh, interact with each, each other. Uh, I know what to do. I know what not to do because there was like many mistakes made. I've seen it from the like another perspective as well. I, I've seen what not to do to hurt if you don't, don't want to hurt your team and clients. There's different ways to do things. So this is going to be inside of there because like that kind of um, when I when I was offering like the one on one coaching, well, I, I'm still offering it, but it's only I got like a three hour time slot every week. So it's 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 always booked. So this is why I decided to do that instead. And if you really want to have some personalized coaching by the end, Fine by me. We can always do that and attack specific points, but at least you we've covered ninety nine percent of the like the subject for a lot less um, money. Okay, so now module two is about the dealership ecosystem. So why the auto industry is unique? How car dealerships operate as a business? Okay, because it's very uh, particular and it's a little bit different from the like different uh, regions of the world you go to. Um, how monthly incentives work and uh, the co-op money. So how you can you take advantage of the money that's provided by the OEM, the car manufacturers, to their dealerships, um, um, you know, network to advertise more, increase budgets, uh, you know, upsell. If you don't know about this, I'm going to show you how it works. Speaking the car dealership language. So if you come out from outside the industry and you're trying to pay, like to demo or pitch a dealership, they'll know super quick if you're not from this world. So I make sure I'll, I'll make sure you understand what kind of what type of language uh, you're, you're speaking when you're addressing car dealership. If you're just starting out, if you're not starting out, you already know this. So you can skip this one. How to leverage the dealer, dealer community and how to um, uh, how the car dealerships really set their yearly marketing budgets. How about the point right now with the agency that uh, dealerships help like ask us to support them into their marketing budget strategy. So this is pretty cool. So this is like you have first hand, um, you know, take on what kind of budgets you're, 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 you're going to be able to pull in. You acted as advisor, not as a service provider. Um, this will take trust for sure. But at the same time, this can happen. And by that time, you built a solid relationship with the car dealership. So this is why I want to help you do that as well ASAP. OK, well, that's for module two. If you if you were to hire me for one hour to learn all of this, it would uh, bring the total value at 750. Module three is about SMMA operations. So everything I learned over the last few years and few like last decade in terms of operations and operating an agency at a profitable level, um, uh, our margins right now are sitting at 20 plus percent for whatever we're doing right now, and it's impressive in this space. But uh, it's not an accident; it's by design. I want to show you how to do it, how to do business accounting 101, cash flow management, setting up your billing structure as well, onboarding clients, structuring agreements. And also I should put in, in there making sure your clients are paying you because um, with the agency model, it's tough because at some point you might uh, bill a client. You trust that, that client that happened to me. Um, you invest that money over to Google, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram and whoop. They change their mind for some reason. You're not the cool guy anymore. You're not the reason they're they're in business, and they decide not to pay you. So instead of doing your measly a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand a month, you're stuck holding a bag for twenty, thirty k. That happened to me for thirty eight thousand dollars, and it almost killed my business. So I'm going to show you exactly what to do to make sure that doesn't happen for you. 
Um, again, this is a 90 minute session uh, in the coaching program at 215 hours. So 375 US total value of the package so far, 1125. And I'm not done. Should I keep going? Module four, outreach and demo. So the most people that reach out to me and the most um, conversation I had with SMMA or agency owners so far were about outreach and how to do it in an effective way so you can reach out to more clients, close more clients, increase the billing, um, you know, build a business, of course. Uh, outreach and demos, how to do it. Um, so how to address your online presence to build trust because most of you guys are calling you don't have a website you don't have a social media presence or it doesn't work or you're drinking um like a bottle of vodka on the, on your facebook page um we're gonna go uh, through all of that to make sure you have a brand uh, you have a solid profession professional brand it's less complicated than you think but you must know exactly what to do um i want to help you with the content about that how to choose your CRM if you're starting out or if you have 10 clients, that might just be a different um, uh, decision. I mean, there's different tools, there's free tools, um, paid tools as well, some amazing CRMs, but uh, I don't want you to be burdened with overhead to start. So I wanna share with you exactly what to do to get started, to make, to make it make sense, so you can follow up, track your clients um, and build your business. Building your prospect list, I wanna show you how to do that. Cold calling, call deal uh, car dealerships, there's a module about that as well, how to do it, video explanation, more in depth that, um, that, than what we did earlier today. Uh, how to increase cold call success, how to get your first paying client, how to pitch your services the right way so you, know, you, you, you look professional and it works. How to choose your clients because you want to choose who you're not working with. I'm going to tell you right now, you must not be working with every single uh, dealership or that applies to anyone, any industry, really. Deal stages to keep in mind um, so you have a proper pipeline flow. Uh, how to do outreach uh, through video the smart way so it's scalable and easy and effective. Um, that uh, that session is a three hour set three hour session at two fifty dollars an hour so total seven fifty. Um, it's it added up here a total value of twelve uh, eighteen hundred seventy five dollars so far. Module five is about ser service delivery. So what do you have to do once you have your first clients? Let's say, imagine that. So you pitch, your, you, you reach out to a ton of people, get demos. Someone says, yes, what's next? What do you do next? If you're stumbling, if you're like, uh, uh, I don't know, I'll call you back. You're, you're done, right? You should know the next step always. Okay. So here's, here's what I'm going to do. Mr. Client, that kind of info you're down. This is agreement. This is what's next. When you're done with this, this was, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to send an email or a request to that person. You, you know, you, you like the fun starts when you just sign your first clients. Okay. Or your next client, you know, if you're, you're already in business, you already know this, but I want to show you exactly what we are doing in the system I built to look like a pro whenever I sign a new client. It's super easy and super comforting as well for the client because at that point they made a decision, but they're still scared, right? So it's, it's very professional and good for business and the relationship as well to let them know, you know what you're doing. Even if it's your first client, I don't want them to feel it. Okay. You should um, be perceived as an authority and very professional in what you do. So, um, I want to teach you a little bit about client product chem chemistry um, because you're going to have like some change management to address at some point, because if you're adding a new product or changing something into a business, you might have some change management to do social media copywriting a one on one. So how to build ads that work on the first try, um, just, you know, so you don't need to optimize for months before it works. So this way it was, it will save your face. You won't have to tell your client, well, we'll just wait a little bit, uh, just a few more weeks while optimize will work right away. Different, uh, lead generation models, lead generation strategies, connect, uh, connecting car buyers with your client. Most of them will have a CRM. And if you want to drive leads, you must be able to drive leads directly in, into the CRM. If that's the case, because otherwise they will not be purchasing anything from you or your services. If you can't put the leads, uh, in their platform, they're using on a day-to-day -day basis to drive their business. Okay. So forget it. 
how to conduct performance reviews. So performance reviews is basically a monthly meeting. You want to know exactly what to go for, how to address what's really working, and what's not working. Okay. I'm going to show you how we're doing that to make sure we can keep our client, keep building a relationship and also create opportunities to upsell because performance reviews are a great, uh, a great spot to upsell the services. Once you know, um, what they need what they're happy with, like with and what kind of um, you know, opportunities they have in front of them as well. Really want to know um, what's next for them and be able to know if they got like $2,000 they just pulled from somewhere else you want to know right, right now and have an idea ready for them to say, by the way, if you're ever ready, you should be doing this next. And they might just say yes on the spot and it's going to be easy upsell. Okay, so module five, private session. Uh, service delivery private sessions 375 so uh, 90 minute session in private coaching setting so total value now we are we're at 2250 and I'm ke I'll keep going guys you'll see there's a lot inside of that uh, that package you'll see module six how to scale your agency okay so now that you've had your like your first 10 clients you want to scale to 40 you want to scale to 60 clients you want to keep going if you want if you don't want to like scale, that's fine. I, I won't judge you. It's fine. But maybe you want to. So you'll know exactly now is not it's going to be the time to generate inbound leads, how to um, make your website a little bit more sturdy, uh, video sales page, how to upsell clients, uh, how to build a larger pipeline, multiplying your outreach, possibly uh, through building a sales team, at least maybe part time to start. But then you'll need full time help to, uh, you know, bringing the, the demos and the, you know, the sales calls, because at that point, at some point you might be reaching out to 500, a thousand people a week. And at this point you'll have 30, 40, 50 demos per week. You might need help. Um, you might do them yourself, or you might be able to, um, uh, hire someone to do do them on your, on, on your behalf. Maybe focus on that, focus on the sales side, side of things while you build, continue building the business, which is the right setting to do, uh, especially if you don't really like the sales uh, portion of things. Um, but I, I like it and I still do calls with clients because I like to understand what they want. Module six, the scaling module is 375. It's a 1.5 hour session, so 90 minute session with uh, my private coaching clients. So we're now at total value of $2,600. Um, then I decided to add live calls and recordings because inside that package, that uh, that masterclass, the car dealership, SMA masterclass, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold a bi uh, bi weekly calls with anyone who's purchased purchased the call to discuss specific issues, concerns, questions, uh, just to make sure we grow together as well and we build a real community through video. And it's just not text is fine, but I like to speak with uh, with you guys. It's, it's uh, and I learn a lot from you guys as well. And this is an opportunity as well to be putting out more um, like better content uh, to for whoever's interested in this. So live call recordings, um, we had a few in the past. I was able to save a few of them um, from the version 1.0 of, of this program. Now I make it in the version 2.0. So obviously it's going to be a lot better. And um, the, the, the thing is, I didn't even raise the price yet. So um, I might I might do it in the in, in the future. But my goal is to make this course accessible to anyone who wants to build a business in the dealership um, marketing agency world. Um, I think it's cool. I want to get to know a lot of you guys. Um, my dream is to get a thousand people inside that program and then we can all benefit together and grow together. That would be my dream. So if you want to join this dream, keep it going. So um, these recordings, uh, I put a value of 750, but really like by the time we get like 20 recorded and I couldn't even put a price on that because there's going to be a lot of knowledge inside of that new perspectives, uh, questions from other people. I don't even know yet. And it's going to be amazing uh, just from the experience. So 30, the total value 3,300. Now, I wanted to get, give you some bonuses in forms of like what we just seen, like this part here is mostly um, video. OK, so it's all video, me teaching you stuff, showing you exactly how to do things like attack specific issues. But I also wanted to give you tools. So let's say you are just starting out and um, 
you don't have any tools, no CRM. What I wanted to do is build like what I built for my company is uh, like my agency OS operating system. OK, so inside of there, uh, I got my CRM, my I, I can manage my pipeline. So where my my deals are sitting right now, um, should I be having like uh, am I might hit like hitting my benchmarks or KPIs in terms of how many demos I want in a like in a given week knowing that reverse engineering, if I want that amount of new clients, I need that amount of new uh, demos. I need to send that amount of emails, uh, calendar events, whatever's going on with the team, with the trainings, with, um, you know, with the clients, meeting notes. This way I can have meeting notes and performance reviews with clients all in the same place. So we know every time we work with a client, we know where we were last month where we are today and what's coming. And then we can go back in time and see, did we achieve what we were expecting to be, um, uh, what we expected to achieve with the changes we made. We can keep track of what's going on because when you scale at 30 clients for one performance review uh, or 50 clients and uh, like one performance review every month, it's going to get confusing for you guys to remember what we did and what, what kind of campaign we changed this, did that, that time over and what kind of model did we focus on that time? it's nearly impossible. Like I surely cannot do it. My brain is not built for that. Okay. Maybe yours and I'm happy for you. But like in our case, we keep everything in a single document and then you, you can see the breakdown and see really what's like, what, what, what kind of, uh, um, performance we had in the past. Did we improve? And then like spoiler alert, it's much easier to go back and pull a case study when you have like the whole track record over 15 months and say, when we started working with that car dealership, we started at blah, blah, blah. And then we're achieving this or three months after. And it's easy to build a quick case study and uh, send that through your email list I talked to you about earlier. Smart, right? It's only experience. It's not smart. Um, meeting notes, invoice tracking as well. Um, we like, you're not uh, required to do this, but in our system, we log if we send the invoice and if the invoice was paid just to make sure we can keep track. Um, our accounting software does that as well, but it's it's a little bit easier to see uh, how we can um, calculate the commission for the SDR. So but that's entirely up to you. It's in there. Uh, income and ex expense tracking is uh, it's super cool to see what's coming in and what's coming out as your business. It's not only super cool, but it's vital. Um, subscription tracking, whatever tools you have, it's uh, it's fun to see like like which tool is active, which tier, like how many, how much does it, like does it cost every every month? What's the like the login information, whatever, right? It's it's uh, like over time, I did not start this way, but I really built over time last three years and a half, like a full dashboard for my business. Even there's wiki in there. It's not here, but like what to do in that case, like, like standard, standard operation, uh, operating procedures. Let's say we sign a, a client. This is one, two, three, four, five, what we should be doing, what we should send them. The emails are in there as well. If you want to send an email to a new client, it's already written for us. Uh, we could ad adapt it to uh, for you or you can just take the whole thing and just adapt it to your company. It's it's really cool and I'm building it as we go and I'm still updating it on a monthly basis. OK, and by the way, it works on mobile and desktop. It's a uh, it, it's built on Notion. If you know Notion, it's it's a super cool tool. I could not work without like or exist without this tool uh, as of today. And it's super cool because it's free. You don't, you don't even need to have the paid version to run it. So you just need to duplicate the car dealership agency OS and uh, right. It's in, it's in your, it's in your account. So I put that value at 1500 just because I thought it would be silly. But for me, I like it's worth like $50,000 what we've built in there. So just if I put really $50,000, you wouldn't have believed me. And you would have said, you know, this guy's crazy, but it's, it's really, really valuable to have like an operation, like a dashboard, um, some kind of command center if you want to drive a business. So we're now sitting at 40, uh, $4,800 in terms of value inside that package so far. And I'm not done guys. So bonus, bonus two, cold call script and cheat sheet. So I want to um, give you uh, like how to get 
past goal, the gatekeeper. So maybe it's going to be the receptionist or the secretary or the assistant, depending on the structure, how to um, actually address a decision maker, what type of questions to ask, a discovery call cheat sheet. So maybe, <clears throat> you know, some kind of a blueprint. Sorry, I'm losing my voice now. We're at two hours and a half in, so it's pretty, it's pretty intense. Um, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so discovery call. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks for the uh, and the encouragement. I'm almost done. Okay, yeah. I'll try to make it quick. I I put a lot of effort into this thing and a lot of things. Fill in the blanks. Um, so basically, like with the time spent, easily five hundred dollars, uh, especially because it's specific to the car dealership niche. So fifty three hundred dollars. Cold email scripts. So if you want to reach out to more people at a time with cold email scripts, I want to do want to help you do it the right way. If you're addressing um, new car dealerships, used car dealerships, finance dealerships, uh, you know, and how to build a drip campaign, which I'm using in, in my company, because when we're logging a prospect into a system, there's a sequence, a sequence of things that's already automated for our business. So they just trickle down and receive new emails every single week or so. We don't have we're not actually doing mass mailing. I'm really doing like drip campaigns uh, based on the information I got, the position of the people and the type of dealership. Um, so I, I want to show you how to do that. But uh, that's more as you scale. It's, it could be overkill if you're sitting at zero to five clients. But I still wanted to um, make it available. Bonus four. SMA Tech Pack training. Um, so training is like it's just me showing you how I'm using certain tools. I really like to make my business and processes and the team uh, interact in, in like in easily, if that makes sense. OK, so I uh, how I'm automating um, the accounting side of things, how I'm setting rules from some for some stuff just to make sure we don't like me or people on my team are not spending time just clicking around, just doing things that could be automated. OK, so I'm showing you that. Uh, my reporting tool I'm using right now, email operations, uh, how I'm sending emails, all other tools I used to, uh, to to run my agency. I just wanted to give you like, some, some kind of turnkey package. So here's how I'm doing it, how I'm uh, booking appointments as well. Um, and it's super affordable, by the way, and I have no like uh, money incentive to share that with you. I just want to help you like kickstart the whole thing and make it easier for you so you don't spend like dozens and dozens of hours trying to put this together. It's just, it sucks because I know, right? So I put 250 value here, but again, it could be more than that. Total value of the whole thing, 5,600. Like social media ads, copy template. Uh, this is super important because inside of that, you'll get like pre-written ads that are performing well or have performed well in the past for our business. Like we're talking like based on thousands of different ads. Okay. It's just not trees. It's just literally, literally thousands of ads, new car, used car trade and finance service parts. Um, for now, I might add more in, in the future, but that's mainly 99 for 99 percent of ads right now on social media for car dealerships value is 750. Um, for us, it's, it's worth more than this. But then again, if I put $75,000, it would just say that I'm just crazy. Now, total value, 6,300, not done. Many chat, uh, chat, uh, chatbot templates. Uh, this is important because like working with social media, uh, quality is always an issue. Okay. So people on, um, on Google are searching for a specific car. So they have an intent. If you want to grab them on Facebook and Instagram, uh, you have to have a compelling offer, ad copy, you know, that kind of thing. Also, you will find that many people are not that interested or that committed. So over time, what I decided to do is pull uh, these leads into Messenger and then I build chatbot uh, templates custom to car dealerships, depending on what they wanted to achieve. I use ManyChat. It's a super sturdy tool. It's really flexible and works super well. There's no bugs. You can do it all yourself. But in here, I build the whole thing for you. Uh, hours and hours and hours, dozens of hours of building chatbot templates. Uh, basically, I pulled the dealership names out um, from what um, templates are working right now. I think I got like 58 templates. So I put like I pulled out the better ones, the best ones. 
or new used again created finance service and parts just to match the ad copy easily a value of two thousand dollars easily total value 83.75 so far and i'm not done Onboarding flow and templates. So I was talking to you about, let's say your client says yes, what you should be doing next, right? I got a super, like it's, it's super simple, but it's saving me a lot of time, a lot of back and forth with the clients going like fishing for information. So I just say, okay, perfect. Um, now we're, that we're done and the agreement is signed, I want to take five minutes to ask you a list of questions just to make sure we can save some time. We can be set up properly, set up in a, like in, in a super like fast okay set up quickly i want i don't want to be set up in one month from now i want to be able to start uh, producing results for you right now um so it's the only the, the the questions you have to answer to for all of them it's a spreadsheet as well so it's going to be the same one for your teams for all your clients it's going to help you save some time and make less mistakes easily 250 um value so total value now is 8625 so $8,625,000, uh, $8,625 if you were to hire me and do the whole thing one-on-one, -on -one, okay? Again, I patch it, I package the best um, questions and the best tools overall from hun like for like uh, within hundreds of private calls. So this is the most value-packed uh, system and process and package if you want to build a business in the car dealership industry okay then when we're done with all of this you might have some questions that are specific to your agency or your business or your situation or your location right we have a one-on-one -on -one coaching call included in that uh, package as well value 250 an hour like i said this is what i charge for every single hour i spend uh coaching people it's paid up front um it's always build as it's booked okay so you cannot have a meeting with me under 250 uh like unless you pay 250 okay just respect my time and uh respect respect the value i'm i i, I am pulling out i'm actually uh charging less here because i'm building a product i'm charging 500 dollars an hour with car dealerships um just because i understand that every time i take an hour out of my business to put it into someone else's I'm slowing my business's growth, if that makes sense. Okay. Still, I'm super interested in having that kind of conversation with you. I really want to help you build a better business here. Okay. So total value is now $8,875. Okay. I added inside here a community because I wanted to be able to uh, answer questions or chat with other agency owners in between our bi-weekly calls um you know feedback sometimes try to get some feedback on an ad it's easier if you if you just post a picture ask a question just like a facebook group but just for us here right in autobahn academy um it's private to us um whatever is going on here nobody else is see um we can learn as a group build connections partnerships it's 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 really cool i've been parts of communities where people grow and it's really um it's really nice so that's all right now the total value is 8800 um but i'm selling the whole package for 300 dollars. okay so if you remember remember only one hour um one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me right now is 250. it might just go up in the future for sure uh, i'm not discounting any anything as i'm going but i really wanted to make it clear that for you it's a lot of value for a little investment today so just because i was able to package answers to questions you might not even ask if we meet together so this is what like th this program is really crowdsources from agency owners from everywhere so it's gonna for sure help you get better at building your business so just imagine if you could just jump straight away like straight away fast track your success or fast track your growth to 5, 10, 15, 20 clients in the next few weeks, in the next few months, uh, what it, would it mean for you? What, what, what kind of business, what kind of life you, you, you're able to achieve now? It's, it's what I'm offering you today. I'm passing along my knowledge from 15 years of experience 
in the automotive field, automotive industry, just trying to uh, give you the the blueprint so you don't make the same mistakes I made because I wish I could have bought something like this when I started because this this investment is basically recouped and you sign one client you've you've already recouped twice the money you just invested so this is what I wanted to offer you so from today you simply have three choice okay and I'm not ju gonna judge you with any of those okay so you have two choice keep going as is and learn by trial and error there's nothing wrong with that that's what i did okay i didn't have this before hiring me at 250 usd an hour for 30 hours plus for the eight to nine grand okay to teach you what's already inside the course the packages the tools all that kind of thing or number three which is an easy yes take the shortcut and get the value pack car dealership smma masterclass is that an easy answer for you guys yeah I think we can all agree here, okay? I, I I was not like I was not intending and expecting to create this thing, but with so many great questions from you guys, I wanted to package the whole thing so it makes sense for you, it makes sense for me. It's not my core business right now, and I still wanted to make it accessible if you're building a business right now, if you'd like to try it out. So, would you guys like to know how do you actually purchase this thing? I'm making it available, so yeah. I see you guys are excited about this. That's that's great news because honestly, I didn't know coming into that thing if you guys would actually one stay for the whole thing, right? Try to see if like one for the training, two, if you really wanted to know more about the product or like the program, and also <laughs> if you'd be interested to buy it because some people just expect everything to be for free, uh, like even if it's super super valuable. But like, obviously, if you're still here, um, you understand a little bit more about business than most people that you must invest in yourself in, in the business in order to grow. And that's that's super key because like for people that don't understand this, it's going to be really, really hard to um, to grow as an individual, also a business, because the business can only grow at the rate um, you know, because the business is like what I want to say is the business is always limited to the skill set of the the team that leads the business. And in your case, in our case, we're a small teams. Uh, and I, in my case, I'm the only leader right now. And in your case, it might just be the same, right? If you're the leader, you must grow as a person in order to grow your business because your business will always and forever be limited by your skill set, if that makes sense. So. I'm going to show you exactly how to buy this thing. Um, it's basically, I'm going to make it simple. I want to wrap this up because it's been a moment. Um, I'd like you to be able to move on to the next level. If you really want to do it, you can go to car dealership, smma.com. If you want to buy the whole thing, um, if you are in the, still in the pre-launch phase, which might be, um, I'm going to try to have like some sweet, sweet deals for you. Otherwise it's always forever going to be a great investment. At three hundred dollars for the whole package, I wanted to I want to make it fair for everyone, so I'm only going to raise the price. So if you go onto car dealership smma.com and you see a price, it's not it's never gonna get lower. I don't like to discount things, and I think it's it's there's plenty of value to um you know to to help you recoup your investment super quick. And um, I'll even add a guarantee, just like I'm doing with pretty much everything I'm doing. I want you to succeed. I don't want to steal money from you if you don't succeed. I, f I, I actually feel bad if uh, I'm, I'm taking money from you and you can't make it back in a very timely manner. So if that ever happens, know that we have a guarantee and there's um, an opt out and that you'll get your money back if you want to go. Um, if that ever happens, but that's worst case scenario. And like so far it's happened to me once it was a very specific situation, which is fine. Um, so go to car dealership, smma.com. If you want to like buy the package, um, it's uh, $300, uh, $300 today value of $8,875 as we, uh, as we've seen. It's uh, you, you'll get the whole access, lifetime access to the whole thing, to whatever's coming next, to whatever improvements coming next, to the live sessions, to the recordings. If you miss one, to the community, to the onboarding, 
uh, template, the chatbot template, the ad copy template, deck stack I'm running in my own agency, email scripts, outreach scripts, my CRM, and um, like more more than CRM, it's uh, like a car dealership agency operating system. All uh, bonuses here, the, like the bonus content that's coming, uh, the scaling module, the delivery module, the outreach module, the operations module, the dealership ecosystem module, and the foundation just to make sure you start the right way. Now, what I'm going to do is I actually took <coughs> the questions from past the past, like the, uh, the, the past training I did um, with this. I didn't record this one, um, but because I it was the first time doing the whole thing, I didn't know I was to perform. So I took a smaller group. And it went well. I should have recorded it, but it is what it is. Um, I like some people ask me questions, so I'm gonna take a, take a moment to ask uh, to answer these questions. And if if you have more in the chat, uh, please feel free. But I see already a couple of you guys left uh, to the website. I see like there's four people that bought the thing already, so that's pretty cool. Nice five now. Joshua. Josh. Josh is amazing. Finally pulled the trigger. Okay. Anyway, a question to ask uh, during the, 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 the live training last time, two weeks ago. What's the success rate of people who've taken this course? So this is version two of the course. Um, in total, I had 38 students in the first one. Uh, two, three, three didn't finish, didn't do the whole thing. Um, so if you want to do like what, 93, 94%. <clears throat> and uh, as, a, like, as far as I know, Last time I checked, at least seven of them were doing 25K or more a month in profit. So that's the success rate. Um, you I already know who's putting in the work and who's scared to build a business. And it, it, like, look, it's not it's not for everyone. So I'm never going to judge you if that's not for you. If you find out like you learn something, let's say you purchase the whole thing, you go through the whole thing and say, you know what? Not for me. That's fine. At least you learn that it's not for you and you can move on to something else. Okay, that's it. It's easy. Uh, does this course teach me how to win my first SMA clients? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, like there's a good deal of, uh, of time spent on outreach. I'm very, very available for anyone who needs help to do outreach. I can even... Um, some people, uh, like with coaching sessions or bonus co coaching sessions in the past with like the 1.0 version, actually we reviewed some calls of theirs just to make sure what, like, you know, what, what could I do better like for the next calls? And like, sometimes just common sense, right? You already know this, but sometimes just hearing it from someone else and other perspective and say, you know what, like here, here's our, how I perceive this. You should be saying this instead. Um, it's going to help you like grow exponentially super quick. Um, do I need to have prior knowledge or experience in social media marketing? No, um, it's e like it's going to be easier. not going to lie. It's going to be easier if you're not starting from scratch or if you have experience from another, um, you know, industry, that kind of thing. But even if you're starting from zero, it's uh, still going to work out for you. And this is where the community and live coaching calls um, gets super important. Um, this is like I would say 30, like 30, 50 percent of the call. These calls are spent on reviewing actual examples, um, you know, um, building ads together, example, like sharing stuff. This is where I get to be fed by you guys from your questions and continue building more than this year okay all of this i built like all of this as of today i don't need it i just built it because you guys asked for it right makes sense uh will this course cover all aspects of social media or only specific problems um right now it's only facebook and instagram because it's so <clears throat> replicable easy proven uh like i said i could do one in the future for TikTok or others but I'm not sure, like the return on investment or time spent for both me and you and even your clients, it's uh, I'm not sure, on, honestly, it's not like an easy low hanging fruit. Like I said, with TikTok, you have to like do like solid creative. It's where I see it as an extension at some point. Um, this is something I would like to offer. But if you want to do it right, you have like to have some kind of a player inside the dealership or B. 
um, like a, um, an actor, or if you want to do it yourself, good, but I just think it's not scalable. If that makes sense. It's really, really hard to scale a video service, um, with any type of business right now. Like it's, it's totally doable. If that's what you want to do, please go ahead. But like this course or like today is about scaling a business. Okay. So just putting the same amount of time and energy, but seeing the results and like revenue grow exponentially. This is what it's about here. But you know, some people are fine. Like you can do, you can work inside your business. If you want here, we're talking about working on the business itself, two different things. No wrong answer. Just not what I'm into. How is this course different from other SMM programs? I, I, uh, I bought a few uh, SMM programs just for the kicks and, um, some of them are pretty good. Um, but none of them are relevant when it, when it, when it, uh, when it's time to talk about car dealerships, I didn't see any, um, any car dealership program right now, just attacking that specific, um, segment or, um, type of client It's it's really unique. Just like I would not go out and say, you know what, I'm going to teach you how to build an SMMA. Um, I don't know in the personal care or gym, uh, you know, um, sector. Okay. I know nothing about that except that I go to the gym once in a while, I should go more than once in a while. But what I'm, what, what I mean is that like, it's not relevant. You have to apply uh, and be specific to a niche. When it's too general, it's going to be fluff. It's going to be okay, but no game changer here. I want you to be able to build a business and say, you know what, Mark, you, this skyrocketed my, my old business. This is my goal. Easy. Next, uh, is this really worth $8,000? I think it's worth even more and more and more than that. I mean, I've built from like what I put into that thing. Like it's, it's combined knowledge I've used to build over 15 million in this industry. So you tell me if it's worth $8,000. Are there practical assignments included? Yeah, I, I want to add more, um, quizzes. I'd like to ask a few questions when a module is done, just to make sure like the, the stuff like, you know, sticks sometimes just watching videos after videos, it could be a little bit cumbersome for your, your, your brain, but sometimes just stopping and answering a few questions, just make sure the information sticks in a better way. But I, man, if you, if you guys in the, in the program, um, want more of these, like I'm hundred percent down. Is there any option for, Oh, important. I'm asking quizzes because I'm grading you guys. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit later, I think, but I forgot to tell you it's should be in here. Um, I'm giving you a certificate of completion. If you're doing the whole thing, 90%, uh, grade or plus you you'll get a certification plus a personal recommendation from me. You can use to help you sign more clients. Um, you know, so that could help. Is there an option for payment plan? Do I need to pay all at once? Uh, yes. Pay all at once. Uh, this is the only, um, way I know you're committed to this. Uh, look, I'll be honest. I, I made some payment plans, payment plans in the past. People were not taking it seriously. They were not coming in. They were just trying to save a few bucks, try to scam me, whatever. I, I don't really care people doing this. If they adopt that mindset and they think they can make it in business, they're totally wrong. So the costs for them, is not going to be 300 bucks. It's going to be thousands and thousands more than that. Okay. Makes sense. Worst case, I found this the other day. Um, if you're in the US, I think it's only available in the US, but you could actually apply for PayPal credit. No interest in six months, purchase $99 or more. But honestly, you guys pay your stuff out, right? Just if you really have no money, go sign a client, like do whatever you can and come back and buy the thing. That's it. That's what I would do. Credit. Like, I think I'll remove it for next time. I don't even believe it's a good idea. Can I apply what I learned to other industries if I decide to pivot, pivot later? Yeah. Yeah, you could be, um, like, although the, the, like the auto industry niche is, is, uh, it's high ticket e-com, right? It's, uh, we're selling $30,000 things online. 
which is not given to every industry. But if you're able to make it and succeed in the auto business, the other businesses will seem like a piece of cake. I can tell you that. We've been having like other, um, like 10% of our business right now is from things outside automotive. It's really a piece of cake. It's easy, 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 easy. I just don't have any interest in the um, hair care, construction. I like as of now, unless I find someone who really wants to scale that portion of their business for me, I'm not interested to put more effort. I just want to keep going in my niche. And this makes sense. Uh, how much time do I need to commit to this course each week? Obviously, it's um, it's up to you. But it's not a um, it's not a fifty hours uh, fifty hour course either. Huh? I wanted to. By the time I'm done with everything, it should be under two hours. Okay, it's not because it's, there's no value. It's the opposite. I didn't want to fluff the whole thing. It's gonna be less than the whole training today. It's more value packed. It's no conversations, no questions, no chat interaction, right? It's only, here's the problem you have, here's what you have to do, here's how it's going to help you, boom, 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 all over, right? Depending on specific aspects. So I really wanted to make it 60 minutes when I started, but it, it was like impossible. There are so many things I want to teach you guys or like help you with, guys. Um, Make sense so far for the questions? Any Anything else? Okay. You guys are, are cool and you're waiting for those who are left. We sold Let's a couple more. That's cool. Should be a cool uh, cool gang. Will I receive certification upon com completion of this course? Yes, sir. Um, I want you to be able to show this. Uh, frame it if you want. <clears throat> Your call. It's always cool to have like a certificate of completion. Also, um, for these who will pass this course with stellar results, you will have a personal recommendation, like I said, um, just to help you win your first clients, uh, put it on LinkedIn as well, you know, make it so uh, if I can help in any way in terms of trust or vouch for you guys, I'm going to happy, be happy to do it. Are there any hidden costs or fees involved apart from the upfront cost of the course? Nope. Um, I, I just hate hidden fees myself. Um, not going to do that to you. Uh, you can choose purchase you. Um, yeah, you can choose to purchase, uh, coaching sessions as an add on. Um, you will be asked if you want to take like a coaching package as well. When you buy the course, you can say yes, you can say no, it's fine by me. I'm not, I'm not looking to, uh, to, to screw you with anything. As of today, there's no monthly. I might change in the future, depending, but I'm not sure. But anyway, if you purchase it right now, you're not going to have like surprises, surprise charges in the future. As I, uh, f future I'm not going to come back and say, yeah, you know what? It's a hundred bucks a month now. So you're grandfathered in at the price you pay today, whatever the price increase in the future. Or if I decide to package the whole thing in a different way and make it like a thousand bucks a year or whatever, right? Right. Um, no. So like, let this video serve as proof. I'm not going to do this. And if I, I, I never do this anyway. I was about to say, if I ever do it, like send me this video, but I, I don't do this. It's stupid. Um, <clears throat> you shouldn't do it either. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> personalized support, mentorship included in the course. Yes. So three kinds um one well four when you sign up we spend 15 minutes together and try to understand what's really stopping you or blocking you right now <clears throat> trying to see if i can add anything to the course make it better for you so you get a quick win two you get a one-on-one -on -one coaching uh session with me which i suggest you take at the end of the course to discuss the gaps maybe in your in your specific situation and this way um, you don't want to ask or you don't waste your hour asking questions that will be answered in the course uh, or within the, the tools or whatever, right? And uh, there's a community where I'd like to engage with people on a daily basis, at least once, um, you know, to answer questions, um, that kind of thing, or uh, in the live training sessions for sure, the live videos for those who can make it. 
um, if that if that helps. Um, this is what's available in terms of community and masterminding, if you would say, because other people might just have some answers to your question and uh, not just me, just we can find solutions as a group and it's pretty cool. Uh, can I access your course materials after completion? <clears throat> yes. Um, this is the lifetime access. You get a login. Um, if you purchase the thing, it's going to be on forever. You know, there's really no, no catch about this. There's no time limit. You don't have to like consume the whole thing within 30 days, although you should because static static from the stats I've been seeing. <laughs> on my end people who don't complete within like two weeks never just come back and complete it and obviously it's not what i want i want to help you i want you to like listen to this thing five things if you can like five times if you can just to make sure you get the whole thing and you consume the whole thing i just hate to sell something at someone and you consume like two percent i don't buy into the adrenaline rush of getting a solution just because you bought a course we all guilty of this. I've, I've done it in the past. There are some few courses I bought. I never watch guys. Don't do that here. Okay, please. Um, but yeah, you will, you'll receive a, a lot, your login information, uh, through email. If you le lose it, you can reach out to the team. We'll give it back. We'll reset your password. It's all under Autobahn Academy. How will this course help me attract clients and grow my agency? Well, it's step by step what you got to do in loop. Um, it's really like the blueprint, whatever is uh, needed to, you know, attract clients, uh, book demos, what you have to say in the, these demos. I got a template of a presentation I want to add. It's not even here. I It's not 100% to my taste, so I, I, I didn't add it yet. But within a few days, I'll add it in the program. Um, I want you to be able to present your services in the right way, be professional, whether you're face to face or whether you're online, because if you're online, you need to be a little bit more prepared because it's not the same thing, right? You're not face to face with someone. Um, like right now, if this question you from what we've seen today, you didn't see the value so far, I, I, I'd be surprised. Like hopefully I've shown you many times over how we can build your company. Is there a refund policy if I'm not satisfied with the course? Yes. With, um, like with all of our programs, there is a refund policy. If you're, if you don't like the thing, uh, you got 14 days or a maximum of 25% completion to uh, ask for a refund refund. Um, it's, it's not happened very often. I, I dropped the ball on a, on the program a few years ago. Um, but I've learned since. Um, basically I really want you to be happy about your purchase. Otherwise I don't want your money. So. Will the course help me understand how to deal with tough clients or failed campaigns? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I want to also show you how to ditch, uh, tough clients and the, the ones that are taking a lot of time and uh, providing very little results or pro profit for your company and how to troubleshoot failed campaigns. Yeah. I know how to do that. Does this course cover legal aspects such as contracts, data privacy, regulations related to social media marketing? Um, in a way, but honestly, you guys are so like you're you guys are buying from like I got clients from more than 100 countries right now, so I can't even keep like keep up with the legal aspects of every single country. To be honest, it's not my goal um, as a general. Um, advice. You should always build your company um, and looking for advice for on the both the accounting side and the legal side as well. OK, I'll leave that to you. I'm not responsible to what comes your way uh, because I simply don't know. It's I, I, I got no clue. It's not that I want to help you. It's just you're better off if you see it this way. Always ask for can like counsel on legal matter, um, money matters, all that kind of thing. I can, I can only show you how to build your business in terms of outreach to clients, how to structure your thing, your offer, how to de deliver, um, your, um, services, but legal, I'm not your expert. Will this course teach me how to build a team as my agency grow? Yeah. You, um, um, in the scaling portion, um, I, I go over when 
to look for some help outside help how to structure it how to uh, coach these people how to uh, like you know how to make it work yeah um a few of our yes like these are the i didn't know this one it wasn't there anyway it's just testimonials for from people who followed version one sarah alex lars uh, all cool people that really were able to build a business um you know i'm gonna wrap this up guys it's been a while or like it's been three hours it's been much more than i wanted but you guys have been great um, if you want to do this thing, enroll now at car dealership, smma.com again, like you've seen nearly $9,000 of value in terms of if you really wanted to do this right now, $300, um, guys, disclaimer, it might like, if you're watching this video in a few months from now, it might be more than $300. So if you're watching this today, just assume that I'm going to raise the price as value continues to grow inside that, that program and the community continues to grow inside that program. I got a target um, sell price for this thing. I'm not going to share it with you guys, but it's not $300 um, because I really believe in the value it can bring. So hopefully um, you've enjoyed this, uh, this session today, this free training. Hopefully you've learned. Let me know in the comments if you're watching this replay on YouTube. Let me know what, you, what you've learned. Um, you, uh, if you are on YouTube, you can also see the link to the, to purchase the course. Um, thank you again. I hope you enjoy, uh, today's sessions as much as I did. I'll see you soon.